Yo, crew members, what it be? What's crackalacking, everybody? And I'm here today with Airy Mouth and Yogurt Neck. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a conversation we had before. <laughs> but anyway, so we are going to try this episode again, what we tried last week, that now is, let's be real, it's going to be a little more fun with three people. Yeah. And it's an episode dedicated strictly to the pew pew. Oh, is that is the that pium- that's oh, your yeah. rendition? That the pium- first, yeah, first the person pium- shooter? Pium- yep. yep. Oh, okay. It is a full first person shooter episode. The history from pium- the pium- early 70s, right? 70s? Oh, yep. yeah. Early 70s. All the way up to the best decade the up, of a gaming ever. All the way up through now. Maybe. Yeah, dude. Yo, we're going to get groovy, <laughs> man. Staying alive, whole nine, man. Wait, what? BG's the whole thing. Wait. We, we gonna, we gonna <laughs> I was like, I was how like, did that just happen? Yeah, we I was like, where the fuck fe- is he going with this? Disco fever. We do, yo, we going back, baby. Don't you fucking dare. Don't I, you fucking dare. I wanted a chip so bad. But this I man was fucking crinkled the whole bag. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, oh we broke this thing up into three, three eras. So, Wes, you have the first one, right? Yeah, so we're going to go with the origins, then cool, we're going to have sit back and listen. Then we're going to have roughly oh, got a while the, uh, to wait. No, I know. the early days of the shooters, which is going to be Andy, now. and then we have the best decade of gaming ever. The mo- you mean the modern era, which is going to be Anthony. Okay, so, you could just say the best decade ever. <laughs> I thought I messed up. I was looking at my phone because that's where I put my notes, and I just opened a note, and it Delete. just said, all my note says is chicken, broccoli, parmesan, and orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wait, that's not my notes. So, oh got it. God. Paper copy. Oh, uh, shit. Okay, so let's start this whole thing off by actually defining what a first-person shooter game is. What is it, Wes? Tell so me. So it, it features a first-person's point of view uh, with which the player sees the actions through the eyes of the player character. Uh, they differ from third-person shooters into which that a third person, you go ahead, you basically look over the shoulder. That is roughly the Sounds definition right. of a first-person shooter. Hell yeah. And like I was saying earlier, trying to go ahead and be funny, which I don't think worked very well. Mm-mm. We need to go back to 19. 19- <laughs> Self-aware, man. I like it. <laughs> Look, man. Yo. This man just started talking out of his nose. You hear that? He's like. <laughs> <laughs> I know when shit flops, okay? And I, and, and I will admit it. So we're gonna, we need to go back to 1973. What uh, happened then? 1973, the very first first-person shooter was actually developed. The game was called uh, Maze War. And it was developed by Greg Thompson, Steve Colley, and Howard Palmer. And the crazy thing about this game was that this had to do with... Um, with the computers that were part of a NASA Arms Research Center program. And they they developed this game that had, uh, I mean, you had, a, as Andy likes to say, last week, Kata's. But I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll call them Corridors. Hey, Kata! <laughs> Kata. I mean, so it was a game that had um, different corridors that you go ahead and walk down. You could either, I mean, it was all tile-based. I mean, it seemed like one tile at a time, and you got to go left or right and all right. that other type of shit. So when they had this game, um, the creators of the game were like, well, why don't we put people in the game? And they were like, "Okay, fine. We can and we can we can uh, code that. That's easy." And then somebody else said, "Can we shoot them?" <laughs> this, I remember talking about this last week. I was like, "Can you great. imagine? Can you imagine being in that room wait, when, wait. when they were talking about this?" <laughs> and someone's just like, "Can we put people in there?" Oh hell yeah! Absolutely. And then the other dude's like, "Oh, can I shoot them?" <laughs> like, imagine that conversation. <laughs> I don't I just, want them in there unless I can shoot them. I just, I just love the thought of that because you mean, you mean the first one's an easy question. Can we put people? Sure. Oh, oh hell yeah, absolutely put people. And then the next question, well, I want to shoot them. Can we shoot them? Can we shoot them? And, and, and then you go, can we? <laughs> does Why that not? make it, does that make it okay? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do it. So, oh uh, <laughs> so um, this game, uh, I mean, you had a three D maze. I mean, which I was talking about with that, you know, with, you know, with that tile with, with the corridors and. <laughs> And the tile, I mean, the tile based, you um, I mean, walking up and down, back and forth. And then you were like other players, you know I mean, when I said people, they're actually represented as basically eyeballs. And that's what you shot. So you're going around shooting eyeballs. Yeah. Which yeah. are people. And I mean, look, I mean, the game was fairly okay. clunky, but at the same time, nobody dealt with anything like this before. You know what, though? That's the, still the pretty early cool. 70s, man. Yeah, it all has to start somewhere. Neat. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then from there we ended up with a, another game that was called uh, Spaceum. Mm. What you doing? Makes I'm sense a, for makes sense for NASA. I'm a spaceum. Yeah. Oh yeah. This uh, yeah, this is another one that was NASA based. So this one was for the Plato system, which I'm guessing was their computer systems for the time. And this game was the first multiplayer 3D game. 
Now, Andy and I were talking about this last week, you know, with the scrapped episode. How many players can we get in a game now? You know I mean, say like say, say a game like Fortnite. How many you can, you can get like what, like 100 people in Fortnite? Something I don't know. Like I've never no, I thought it was 80 something. It's like 80 something. Even back in 1973, 32. Dang. That Which was, is like the standard for like Call of Duties now, isn't it? Yes. I believe so. Or that might even be more. Cuz Team Deathmatch is what? 8 on 8? Team Deathmatch I think is 8 on 8. Yeah. Unless you unless you like uh, back when we still played, I think it was like Big War or something like that. You mean they called it you mean you, yeah, you, you, you mean we go ahead and have like 16 on 16 something like that. Yeah. But yeah, Makes so me feel so fucking old. <laughs> yeah, it's Anthony, cool to see them. Anthony has a bunch of stuff on uh on COD that I'm actually really excited to hear out about. Of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um Space um uh, the big thing with this one was um, essentially, obviously, the multiplayer aspect of it, but also that. So you had um, Spaceham had four planetary system or factions. You had the Agstroms, the Fort, uh, the Fouriers, the Defractions, and the Lasers. Each team would have up to eight players. The players would be located anywhere in the real world. Players flew around space in the first-person view, and then they would see other players as a solid wireframe. So. You remember, so Anthony, you know how like um like mocapping, right? When yeah. You see, you mean we see somebody mocap? You mean you see like their head is just a circle and their body is just like one stick and all? Yep. You it's mean that? You, you mean the whole stick figure like wireframe style? Correct. So that's what you saw with this stuff back in '73. That's pretty solid. Like that was the game. Yeah, that was the game, and then yeah, that's um still, that's still awesome. And then uh, all that of this got us at to where the, we are today. All this what all this happened at the fantastic high speed of one frame per second. That's crazy. That's bonkers. We play certain, depending on the TV you have and the system you have. We hope for 60. Depending on the TV. <laughs> That's system, just being selfish, system, dog. You have one. And even and even with even a lot of PC games, you can play at 120 frames per second. Now. Yeah. That was <clears throat> one frame per second back in 73. Can you imagine, I love that. Can you imagine like the gamer version of that conversation we've all heard about how our grandparents <laughs> had to walk like to the grocery store in the snow and the Five miles. back when I played you you got these 60 we had one frame. We had one frame per second. You have the worst old man voice. <laughs> yeah, that was not old at all. <laughs> <laughs> I aged myself like five years. I was like thirty-seven. You aged yourself like five months. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you, you, you remember what I called him when we first started the episode? <laughs> y- Fucking yogurt, yogurt neck, neck. <laughs> bro. There it is. That's it. That's it. Who was that character? Yogurt neck. I literally just did myself in June. <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate. <clears throat> All right. So. That's, fun. <laughs> that's funny. Holy uh, fuck. So when you would go ahead and see the players, then obviously you would confront them. So the movement was done by um, polar coordinates and positions that were calculated by uh, Cartesian coordinates. I mean, I, I mean, I guess so. So the whole thing about the game was that I mean, you were up high, I mean, within the atmosphere, looking down, you would see these wireframes, and then you would go ahead and basically go latitude, longitude type of thing to go ahead and come down and actually hit these people. Yeah, you know, because mm. it's spaces. You know, I mean, so you're in space. You know, I mean, attacking down below. I got gotcha. you. So you know, I mean, so that's how the game worked. I mean, there were uh, apparently there were a fair amount of uh, astrophysics. You know, what I mean, that gave useful knowledge for the gameplay in the game at the time. I mean, I don't know if like Carl Sagan was a part of it per se, but <laughs> crazy. All right? Yeah. They just I don't know. Swat. I just giggled just, like a schoolgirl. <laughs> I was just say, just, <laughs> I sounded like gold member. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> gold. Let that shoe sting begin. Go ahead. <laughs> now, in addition to this being a 3D action shooter, uh, the game also had an underlying resource economy model that I mean, was being simulated. I mean, so obviously, I mean, it, I mean, a lot of people were going ahead and doing it. Uh, in order to keep the ships in production and stocked with fuel, the weapons and the pilots and the teams were managed had to manage planetary resources. So it was a survival on top, essentially. Hmm. So, it was, so, so you had to... Um, That's different. You had to manage your resources in order to make sure you go ahead and complete your objectives. Hmm. Which you think... You never had to worry about that with, like... I mean, what, back then, like, I mean, you had, like, board games with, like, Risk and all that other shit like that. I mean, you didn't you never think about anything like that. Yeah. That's fucking next-level thinking, you know what I mean, for the absolute precipice of, you know, you know I mean, of these types of games. Shut up, Anthony. Anthony doesn't like when I use big words. Precipice isn't a big word, but you enunciated the shit out of it. Yeah. That's kind of what the face was for. He done pop up to pee. I do pop a lot of peas. So, uh... <laughs> All right, we'll keep that to yourself. Keep her going. <laughs> fuck on Peter Potter, dog. Fuck. Jesus, fuck. Fuck. 
So the next game I want to talk about is a game called Battle Tank. Battle Tank. Battle Tank. Battle Tank. So this game came out in 1980, and this is actually the last one that I'm going to get into, and it's going to bring into what Anthony or um, Andy's going to talk about next. Yes, sir. Uh, so this came out in 1980. It was designed by Ed Rotberg, Owen Rubin, and Roger Hector, and this was a game that was developed by Atari, a, a uh, company that we all know very well. Boop. <laughs> Boop. Sorry, yeah. Pong. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> so this game used a wireframe vector graphics and a black and white um, vector monitor. So essentially, you would go ahead and have a wireframe looking tank, and mm -hmm. then you, you know I mean, and then you go ahead, and that's how that's how you actually went ahead and shot things. You know I mean through that whole thing. And the biggest thing about this game, this wasn't necessarily a console game. It was really big in the arcade scene. Mm -hmm. But the one of the wildest things about it was the way that you played the game in the arcades. You would, all right, so you, you guys know the you know, the sniper games, right? In the arcades, you know, to where you actually go like into the scope. scope and all that type of shit. Yeah. So from what I've been able to gather with, uh, you know, with uh, like tanks and, you know, and, and how you go ahead and look down like the big barrel. We need you know to find I mean? an army guy. You know, I mean, you have... Uh, hey, you good tanks? <laughs> I mean, you have like basically like this, this periscope that you look through. Uh -huh. You mean to go ahead and like see what you're trying to scope down? Your target. Yeah. I have seen that. Just watch a couple movies with tanks. Yeah. So. Like Fury. I've never seen Fury. <laughs> oh, that's a solid movie, dude. Is it? Okay. That's a good movie. Sorry. Anyway. So that is what you would look down to play this game in the arcades. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it was like an actual like. So are we talking like VR style headset yes. that you would pop on? Well, not pop on. You would put your face too. Oh, you put your face too. So it's yeah. almost like a like a down down like a submarine down periscope. Yeah. Down Periscope! Another good movie, by the way. What? Down Periscope. Oh, fair enough. Okay. So anyway, but the, that's basically like the premise of it. You would just like jam your face into this like... Yeah. Periscope. Eye hole looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, pretty cool though. That's neat. Like especially you said for the 80s, right? Oh, 1980. Yeah, so there you go. It, yeah, for the 80s? First that's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, you had the... The main thing about this, I mean, it had two styles of um, of arcade style. It had like an arcade cabinet, which is just the standard size that everybody knew, right? And it had one that was a little smaller called a cabaret cabinet, into which it didn't have it didn't have the periscope. Okay. You know I mean, but you know I mean, when it, you kind of had a little bit of an upward look. Oh fuck that! To give go me ahead that. and actually actually go ahead and give me that you know I mean, full size shots. Joni. Yeah, but I mean, so uh, the gameplay uh, modification was at one hundred thousand points. You know what I mean to go ahead and proper you know, to go ahead and have like the proper conditions and stuff like that. And, um, I mean, this game just went ahead and just built, I mean, you had the wireframe, like Andy and I were talking about this last week. Wireframing is like the beginning of everything now. Mm -hmm. Everything that has to do with animation, movies, CGI, gaming. Yeah, it's the basis of, of everything that they start their product off of. Exactly. And with gaming, all of that really started off of this type of stuff. Which is sick. Back, sick. Dude, dude, back in the How far sick. we've come. Back in the back in the seventies and eighties, like dude, it's yeah, it's, still the same. it's insane. And it. um, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, that's all I have really for uh, these particular games. I mean, these were, I mean, these were the three big ones that you I mean that really went ahead and started the actual movement of first player shooters. First yeah, player, it, first holy person shooters. First, mother of fuck. first person. Yeah, shooters. it's it's crazy to think that that is now a part of how they make games. This wire, you know, that wireframe looking shit, and like back then, that was the game. Yeah, like now, that's just like a step to getting. Like to the beginning step, but that was look, the end product. I mean, I actually I watched like a fifteen minute video on Maze War, and that Maze. Sh Sorry, anytime I hear that word, I'm gonna I, I think it. of the same thing. So, dude, that Maze. was that shit was droningly boring. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> oh my god. For sure. Oh my god. But yo, that was, was people's horrible. Friday night back in the day, bro. Oh yeah. Absolutely. What you watching, Maze? But uh, yeah, so that leads right into where I'm going, which is your early first-person shooters, uh, like late 80s, early 90s, and this game specifically for Anthony called Midi Maze. Fuck you, man. Midi Maze was a, it was an early first-person shooter released in, released. Released. When was it released? Oh, it wasn't. It was released. It was released in 1987 for the Atari. And the reason that I actually, this is part of the reason why I wanted to do this era, because I had no idea that I owned a game that pioneered first-person shooters. Oh, I certainly sick. didn't know it at the time. That's awesome. So this game, Mini Maze, was it was um, maze-based gameplay, and it had character design similar to Pac-Man, and it was displayed in first-person, and it was later ported to Game Boy and Super NES under the title Faceball 2000. I own oh. that. That's at my house. Oh, I now, have seen that. Faceball 2000, it's like... Have uh, you tried playing it since since last week when we went ahead and no. talked about this? No, 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 no. No, I have not. Oh, but I'm, I was hoping you for You probably it. should. I Yeah, I should. And I... I yeah, it's... You literally... 
you're it's in a first person perspective. You're in a maze and you're shooting basically other like geometric objects. Like you have you're there's like you know cylinders and triangles and squares and it's just I had no idea that that pioneered so much shit. And that game also uh, it was the it featured the very first network multiplayer deathmatch. That's Baseball cute. 2000 on, awesome. on Super NES. Uh, it was a it was a relatively minor game, but it was it was the first multiplayer 3D shooter on a mainstream system and the first major LAN action game. LAN obviously, landline. Ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, but it was cool knowing that I owned that and and just honestly just thinking that it was just some shitty game yeah. that I had and had no idea that like of the importance of it. That's really cool. Um, ID Software's Hover Tank 3D uh, released in 1991, and this was the game to pioneer ray casting. Now, again, we talked about this last week. Ray casting is the same, essentially the same thing as ray tracing, which yes. you hear you heard about ad nauseum with these new systems yes, with every so, new system that comes out. Yeah. So, so, so the big thing you hear right now with ray tracing is the Xbox Series X, to where that. Like it's basically just a saturation level of 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 the color pigments. You know what I mean? So you know I mean so like your blacks are like midnight type blacks. You know I mean you know when you're looking in a cave, you know I mean it really looks like you're looking into nothing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now this game Hover Tank 3D pioneered a lot of stuff because it pioneered ray casting and it enabled faster gameplay than the vehicle simulators that you got in the 80s. Some of the ones that you were talking about. Yeah. And Catacomb 3D, another game that they came out with, it, uh, introduced text uh, texture introduced texture mapping so <laughs> so it's like, it's like checks mix it's like checks mix oh it is sweet. like checks mix yes i love checks mix. but uh yeah, yeah texture mapping which is basically just like advanced graphics engines more or less but um those were two of the biggest games in the late 80s early 90s as far as pioneering stuff like ray tracing and texture mapping and you know multiplayer land matches stuff yep. like that after those you know, you, you had little things here and there, but the real rise to popularity came in the early to mid 90s when you had what a lot of people think of when you think first, first person shooters shooter. and the first ones, you immediately think of Doom and Wolfenstein. So in the early 90s to mid 90s, you had Doom and Wolfenstein. So Wolfenstein 3D also created, again, we talked about companies that had their hand in everything. ID Software had their hands in everything, including Wolfenstein 3D, which is one of the first games you think of outside of Doom as being kind of the you know, when, when first person shooters really started to take off, they were the success for Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad it doesn't always happen oh to me. My God. I am so fucking angry right now. <laughs> I'm so, Oh so my God. Angry. You're so aggressively fucking forcing your hand at me. Take me out to dinner first. I'm letting this roll. So. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. Did you just real life hee hee? <laughs> he, he, did a, he, he did a basic <laughs> white bitch hee hee. <laughs> oh my god. He wants Starbucks with okay. that. I okay. am half white. I need to let it out sometimes. <laughs> I, got, was, I gotta get basic sometimes. That was funny, Wes. Oh okay. my god. So you had Wolfenstein 3D, which was a really good game. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. It was. Probably the most successful game outside of Doom in the early 90s. It was an instant success fueled largely by its shareware release and has been credited with inventing the first-person shooter genre. Now, it didn't actually, as we just learned, it didn't exactly invent the first-person genre. Yeah. But it, it's widely thought of that way. It was built on the ray casting technology that was pioneered in the earlier games that I discussed, like Mini Maze and, uh, well, which turned into Faceball 2000. And it's, you know, the design that first-person shooters are still based on today. Now, despite its violent themes, it largely escaped the controversy generated by the later game, Doom. Mm. Ah, yes. Why did you just, mm, you were thinking Mortal I was, Kombat? Yeah, I was about to say Mortal no, Kombat. No, sticking with first-person shooter here is Doom. My apologies. Which, even now, in 20, well, it might have been 2019 at the time, I don't remember. When, Eternal? Yeah, yeah. When we first saw Doom Eternal and we watched someone get shot 17 times and then that same person had their like head ripped off and stabbed to which west was just like that was so much more aggressive than it had to be <laughs> and look i'm fine uh, i am fair. i am fine with gratuitous <laughs> video game violence yeah i think we all are though but holy fuck <clears throat> yeah like yo it's just taking it to the next level yo, yo, yo dude seriously yo sometimes it's like maybe not <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> now that's fair. Even though it escaped controversy, large controversy because of just how violent Doom was, it was banned in Germany because of the overwhelming appearance of Nazis. 
So, I mean, I, I guess Germany just didn't want to deal with that. I always liked at, Wolfenstein because I got to kill Nazis. At that time, I feel like that might have been a little bit of a little, little, uh, little something that's a little bit of an issue for them to deal with at the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The past is still fairly, we fairly do not, fresh. We do us, not though. like this. <laughs> no, I mean, you're right. Now, they did actually, uh, the Super NES version, for whatever reason, decided to replace the enemy attack dogs with giant rats. Because nobody wants to shoot a dog. Which is funny, though, because when you play RPGs these days and stuff, what's the first thing you, like, always go against in every game? A, a giant ass No, a giant-ass rat. Oh, I said dog. You always go like a What dog? Okay. I mean, Last Evil. of Us 2. Resident Evil. Last what? of Us Part 2. Are people not carrying... Are people not having dogs follow them around and shit like that? I was going on his oh, thing talking about the rats. Not in the beginning, but yeah, you're right. I mean, in... Okay. Um, I think it was Fallout Remember 3. The atta- remember the attack dogs in Call of Duty uh, World at War? I think that was that that version. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so that leads me up to Doom. Right. Now, Doom released as a shareware in 1993. It refined Wolfenstein's template by adding improved textures, variations in height, more detailed level design, and effects such as flickering lights and patches of total darkness, creating a more believable 3D environment than Wolfenstein's 3D levels, which all had a flat floor space. I will go ahead and <clears throat> sorry. I will go ahead and say that when it comes down to Doom. Uh, they were limited by the technology of the time with that game because, I mean, normally you, you may think of first-person shooters, now you think like open world. They couldn't do that at that time. So when they built these corridors and the ceilings... <laughs> That's a Appreciate solid it. word. Appreciate it. It was... Kinda. <laughs> it was made that way to go ahead and not put too much of a strain on, you, you mean, on the computing technology to go ahead and, like, make like, like do the code and make the What games. did your Philly mouth just say? Computing technology. Computer. This computer technology. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doom allowed competitive matches between multiple players. <laughs> this man, this death you matches. missed it. What this man do? just gave me the, stop. It was my left hand. I'm, I'm weak on my left hand. I can't do nothing with it. Wow. That's <laughs> a strong hand. That's my first um, hand. So, yeah. As I was saying, Doom allowed competitive matches, uh, Term death matches, which we had heard <clears throat> from Faceball 2000, and the game was responsible for the world's subsequent entry into the video gaming lexicon. The deathmatch concept was inspired by competitive multiplayer ga- uh, fighting games like Street Fighter, Fatal Fury, and it became so popular that its multiplayer features began to cause problems for companies who ne- whose networks were used to play the game. <laughs> That's how popular it got. Now, even though it is not the first, as we found out, it is Doom is considered to be the most important first-person shooter ever made. It was highly inf- uh, influential not only on some sequence shooter games, but also gaming in general, and has been available on almost every single video game and console since. <laughs> I mean, shit. I, I mean, if my memory serves correct, I remember playing that shit on fucking three and a half inch floppy. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was just about to say the same fucking thing. I remember playing yeah. that shit. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> as you can expect, the size so of those good. fucking things, dude. So as good. you can Jesus expect, Christ. because of how violent it is. Uh, it's combination of gory violence, dark humor, and hellish imagery. It got it did garner acclaim from the critic, uh, critics, critics from the from the critics from the critics. I am the clit commander um, <laughs> from the critics, and it generated criticism from religious groups and other commentators, labeling it a murder simulator. Yeah, whatever. That's uh, that's a little wild. And then you know, Mortal Kombat happened. So. Um, <laughs> There was, and we actually talked about this last, well, you brought it up last week, I'll bring it up now. There was actually further controversy when it emerged that the shooters of Columbine High School, Doom was their favorite game, and that's like all they played. Yeah, they, so that they ended up in... The, the controversy as far as does, video, you know, do these disturbing do, video games potentially lead to violence? No. To violence. And that is going it's to be a topic... It's a conversation top, that has to be... Oh, that, we're going to That is definitely going to be a topic that we're going to cover on this podcast at some point. But when it comes down to um, the Columbine uh, shooters, they they were on a bunch of uh, chat rooms and chat boards. You know I mean, you mean they had to do with that game, and I mean that just I mean that just furthered their just uh, depravity. You know what I mean with um you know I mean with the way you know, with you know, just just with their mindset <clears throat> and what they did. So. Yeah, I mean there's like I said, that's definitely a, a, a an episode we can have and a good one because there's. It's not tough, really, to debate either side. Like, there's solid points on both sides of that argument. Uh, but we'll get to that. But, um, so, where the hell was I? Oh, in 1994, uh, Raven Software released Heretic, which was a modified version of Doom, or modified version of the Doom engine that also allowed for vertical aiming, an inventory system to store and select items, which we know in, how, like, every game yeah. now. Um, 
And then in 1995, you got Star Wars Dark Forces after LucasArts decided that Star Wars would make appropriate material for a game in the style of Doom. However, it added sec- uh, it added several features that Doom lacked, such as the ability to crouch, jump, or look up and down, also quite important in the games we play these days. Oh, yeah. Um, it was one of the first games to incorporate 3D-designed objects rendered into a 2D engine. And everything, you know, after that, you had Duke Nukem 3D. Did you ever play Duke Nukem? I, I actually have it for the PlayStation 2, but I've never actually played it. Um, apparently, they deemed Duke Nukem 2 as the last of the great sprite-based shooters, winning acclaim for its humor based around stylized machismo, mm. as well as its gameplay. However, some found the game's treatment of women to be derogatory and tasteless, which and I, can, I can understand from some people because I'm pretty sure in the trailer for the most recent Doom game... Crop tops and big well, breasts no, and like, all that. Duke is, Duke is sitting on his couch playing duke nukem as he's getting a blowjob <laughs> oh shit <laughs> like it's it's pretty funny i'm not gonna lie but i can see how it would go that way mm-hmm. but that takes us to not you know that takes us to 95 and again we have now decided that anthony is going to take 2010 to the present right uh but, 2000 oh you took 2000 to the present well that's we're gonna that's what to, the notes said the, the notes modern... said the notes actually pretty much said from 2000 right. until 2010. Yeah. So ideally, everything that you just heard from Wes and Andy um, is kind of leading into the best decade of gaming, if you think about it. Now, however, the games that we have nowadays are absolutely fantastic. But me personally, this was the best decade of gaming. From 2000 to 2010, the games that I'm about to go through were absolutely, hands down, possibly some of the best first-person shooters you're ever going to hear about. Well, our generation was lucky enough to live through to, a lot of it. Yeah, we, so you had. I think people, we've had this conversation before. We've literally lived through all of gaming. So we we got. If to you see, think about it, we got to see the crazy jump because a lot of these people that were playing these games in the late seventies, early eighties, like that might have been when they stopped playing. So that was the pinnacle of what they got to really Correct. experience. We yep. got. We didn't quite get to see the beginning of that stuff. No, but if you think but, about it, where but we, we pretty took... much started Doom and Wolfenstein is when what we were raised through. Correct. Yeah. And so, we got to see that turn into everything <clears throat> we have now. So Absolutely. My style, my segment's going to be a little bit different than both of yours. Mine is just going to be a rundown of the games that we saw from the year of 2000 until 2010. Boy, there's lots. And there's oh, a God, ton. Yeah. So this segment for myself, I kind of broke it down more of a personalized uh, list of things that I can speak on firsthand. Yeah, I should say because I don't want to give it. I don't want to give the people information that I have never actually yeah, yeah. touched certain games and shit like that. So I don't, I don't want to do that. No, nah, leave that to me with uh, right. With, exactly. With, with so Maze, Maze War and Battle Tank. Maze. <laughs> Um, so what you're going to hear, from, I'm, of course I'm going to do it, I told you I was, from the beginning of the show. So what you're going to hear from me is basically release dates and synopsis of certain games and, and maybe a little bit of information, um, but all the big stuff you heard from Wes and Andy of how these games came to be. We'll, we'll chime in here and then <coughs> if we can Absolutely. Think of yep. um, so basically I'm going to start it off with Halo. Um, and, and, and you're going to hear each segment is actually broken down per game instead of running through different specific years and stuff like that. It's just easier because then we can keep each game um, uh, specific to itself. However, there's one extremely important thing I'd like to bring up, and I, and I can't start until we talk about this. This is literally hands down one of my favorite, and I'm pretty sure it's one of your guys' favorite too. Everyone in the world. Wes, I know you're going to say it. Go ahead. Well, no. It's, it's what are you going to say? I, it's Golden Double 007. Oh, fuck yes. But... but- so I threw out a uh, a question on Facebook. I mean, I'm rarely on Facebook, but I decided to go ahead and do it right. to see what everybody's favorite first person shooter game is. Was it 007? The overwhelming majority. 007 was the overwhelming major- uh, majority. Majority. Wow. It was the majority, my guy. No, anyway, so. you're, yeah, absolutely. It's oh, yeah. hands down, possibly one of my. F- I mean, look if you're if you're looking for a first person. Well, actually, if you ask anybody, this is my thing. If you ask anybody, first person shooter, whether they're old or young, they're gonna say 007. Yeah. So I might wife, be speaking for everybody, no, but I'm pretty you, sure I I'm right. I think you're right. My wife and I were having this conversation last week because I asked her just you know, because my, my wife did game back in the day. So I asked her. I'm like, all right. I'm like, what's your favorite, favorite first person shooter? And she didn't even she didn't hesitate a second. Immediately came out 007, and I'm like, all right, why? And then. She, I mean, obviously, my, my wife's uh, five foot even. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, so she's short, short, short. So she always liked to play as oddball. So oddball, short. I mean, oddball was short. And then, like, what she remembers from the game was 
in order for people to shoot her, you know, and because that uh, because that vertical shot was kind of off, the height difference, the yeah. height difference, people had to be knelt down in order to go ahead and shoot her. So when she'd watch people go past, they'd all just kind of be sliding on a knee because they didn't actually walk yet. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so it was just one of those hilarious things. Then I mean, we also talked about the um, I mean, going ahead and hiding in the duct work and then dropping down in the bathroom. And everybody this, waiting in the bathroom because they knew that's where you're going to drop. Because you can't drop anywhere else. This, yeah. The search for the golden gun. Search for the and, golden and, gun, yes. And karate chop and everybody. Fuck yeah, dog. The AK-47. And just, and, yeah. And the reason that that's the, you know, one of the first ones people would think of is because think about if you if you didn't have an N64, like you said last week, you yeah, always I ended up at whoever's house had one. Yep. Yep. And what's the earliest memory you have of playing a game with other people? Chances are it's GoldenEye. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. As well oh, as we first played, person shooters go. We yeah, played absolutely. GoldenEye at nauseum. Yeah. Oh my God. It was, But I mean, dude, it was incredible. You know, it's funny that we, we talk about this now. I literally saw a video yesterday evening that brought up what is the best child, what is one of the best childhood video games you ever had? And literally it was a dude blowing out the fucking, the middle of the N64 cartridge for 007, <laughs> popping it in and turning it on. I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. That's that's yeah. a, that's like a solid Friday night, not sleeping until <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> yes, dude. 100%. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That brings yeah. back memories. Oh, oh man. man, I miss that game. <laughs> but you yeah. have that? You have every system. Do you have that game? Yeah, of course. Okay. I know I know what we're doing. It's funny. Um, I ended up, just, just a little bit, just sidetrack thing here. I ended up uh, trying to backtrack on some episodes, try to figure out if we did anything with talking about like uh, what we wanted out of the future. And I went into the last episode of last year. And it was An- Andy, myself, uh, Clyburn from Twisty Cape, and Dan. And we were talking, like, like we were talking about um, N64, and I went on a fucking tirade about the control, about the control. Yo, but you gotta experience it, bro. Oh my god, yo! It, but it was hilarious because I'm listening to it, I'm cursing, I'm yelling. You've never been so passionate. My my wife was laughing next to me, yeah, you know, because I pulled it up on my phone, and my daughter goes, "Is that you, Daddy?" I'm like, "Nope." I'm but like, they, but, "I'm like, yeah, honey, that's." But me. like I said, the gaming experiences you miss, not playing because of that control the fact that you never had an n64 i think this is where i'm going to keep it i'm just going to bring my n64 here you can keep it downstairs we can fuck around with gold <gasps> whenever we want <laughs> before a podcast gold put it in here. i don't care you put it in here you got you got some mario kart oh. i got mario kart i got right. mario party i got all those cruising games that are in the arcades cruising usa there you go perfect right. dark we're gonna get okay, back on track so, yeah. i'm so, so excited about all this so shit anthony, we just talked about anthony now we're getting into the modern era of first person shooters which is something that we all Love very very much. Correct, and this will this will touch home with a lot of the the younger generation too. Yes. If you think about it, because this is where a lot of them started to come into their own with video games, absolutely, and, and, and start gaming. Um, so each section I have broken down per not, uh, per company and per uh, uh, game, I guess you could say. So between Halo and all that kind of stuff, and that's actually where I'm going to start. I'm going to start off with Halo three four three. Mm. Hell yeah, Bungie. So, Bungie. November fifteenth, two thousand one. Halo Combat Evolved was a first person. Shooter Shooter developed by Bungie and published by Microsoft. What I was it? still five years away from graduating. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Five Jesus years, I was Christ. Um, again, Halo is set yeah. in the 26th century. Um, you assume the role of Master Chief, a cybernetically enhanced super soldier. John 117. Boom. Now, again, like I said, most of the stuff that I have is just going to be short, brief, so we can continue on with this podcast. Uh, November 9th, 2004, Halo 2. Uh, again, same developer, same publisher. Uh, the time frame is also exactly the same. Uh, the difference here is you fight alongside the alien. Who remembers his name? Covenant? Wait, what? He is. I mean, he is uh, part, of the, part of the covenant. Arbiter. The Arbiter. Arbiter. Hell My yeah! Man, look at um, you. Do you remember? Do you? I'm okay. playing. I'm playing Halo Five Guardians. So you mean so he comes back? Oh, you got a leg up. We're, we're gonna make this a little yeah. more fun. W- Wes, who do they fight? Uh, Guardians. No, the Flood. The f- oh, those little fucking yeah, creepy those, bug those little skull looking things. Poor bug looking Jones. Oh shit! Okay. We're gonna turn. You know what? I'm gonna turn this entire segment into like a fucking <laughs> trivia game, boys. Uh, September 25, 2007. Sorry, that was a little bit of military in me. Halo Three, the third installment of the Halo franchise, probably which, one of the best ones that ever came out. Which is which actually concludes the story arc uh, yep. for Halo. Um, it began in. 2001 with Halo, uh, you assume the role again of Master Chief, and he uh, battles who? Mm. This is where it changes. I mean, not quite. Mm. You battle the Covenant and the Flood. 
Oh, okay, it's a it's combination. Combination okay. of the two. Couldn't even think because I'm still angry because Halo 3 is the game that I'm always talking about, which was the first and the last time they ever got me on one of those collector's edition of a video game. <laughs> oh, and you, you, you I fucking the, bought I the collector's edition? 250 bucks. And you got the mask? Don't even know where it is. And you can go get the no, mask? No, I know where it is. The mask you, can you can go get the mask for, you can go get the it's mask like eight bucks for now. like $8? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, last for the Halo installment was September 22nd, 2009, which is Halo 3 ODST. Love that fucking game. That was a good game. You and I threw down on that a lot. Yeah, we, oh, dude, we, we completed the whole campaign. Correct, that, we that did. That came out after Reach? Yeah. Well, here, okay. Uh, so the this is actually the the fourth installment uh, no, no, it was before Reach. of the Halo franchise. You assume the role and or roles of the Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, which actually stands for ODST. Um which are part of the United Nations Space Command, which is the UNSC. You wait, uh, UNSC. I was yeah. right. Uh, this game is actually the prequel to Halo Three and follows suit right after Halo Two or during Halo Two. Um, basically, <clears throat> during Halo Two, when the ship takes off and they go after the ship. Yeah. Which is the start this of Halo Three. This is what happens 3. after it. This is what happens after it, and this takes place right there. Um. And that's all I've got for Halo. Like I said, my stuff is going to be short and sweet because we got a lot of stuff to cover. Halo no, was a- so okay. So Halo is one of those games to where that they brought um, team deathmatch to a completely different level. Mm-hmm. The multiplayer in Halo was something that was it hit a level that nobody has ever seen. I I I I still know of people to this day. I mean, obviously not Corona days, but <laughs> I mean, I mean before this, I mean before the virus, right? To where that they would, I mean, they would have like uh like bi yearly or yearly um Halo parties. To where that they would, I mean, it would be Halo Three, mm. and you'd be going ahead and jumping. I mean, you'd be doing multiplayer and just fucking just walling out. And you had um, it people uh people our age, it'd be tough to find a game that they remember starting off their online first, you know, their online deathmatch experience than Halo. That was my first because yeah. I ne- I never played Quake. Or anything like that. Halo is the fact very is, first game I ever played online. Fun fact is we'll get into that a little bit when I cover the history of online gaming. So that was all I have really had for Halo. Again, like I said, it's just there's short little snippets of, of yeah. what the game's pretty I mean, much. Look, we'll jump in. We'll break down what we can when we see it. So. Absolutely. Like I said, what you guys actually covered in your eras leading up to mine pretty much covers the basis of what these games are all about. Mm. It's really that simple. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to jump into the Call of Duty franchise. <laughs> this is where it gets serious, boys, because... Your time has come. Yeah. Um, so oh, my Lord. Before this podcast started, I wasn't going to actually touch base on every single one that I have written down, but I feel like that wouldn't be fair for the listeners. So let's start off in October 29th of 2003. There you go. And that was the original Call of Duty. It was a first-person uh, shooter developed by Infinity Ward and published by Activision. Uh, the game simulates warfare of World War II, and much of the theme and gameplay is similar to the Medal of Honor series, which actually a lot of people don't know or they do, or maybe they don't. I don't know. Anyway, a large group of the people that created the Medal of Honor actually started uh, Infinity Ward and started creating. Oh shit! Really? And I actually, did not know that. And actually oh, that's created, awesome. And actually created the Call of Duty franchise. Yeah, that is information I didn't know. <clears throat> yeah. So like the that's cool. Your 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 heavy hitters from the he- the the Medal of Honor series are the ones that actually created Infinity Ward. Nice. Yeah. Um, hence why it has the same. So if you've ever played Medal of Honor. And you play Call of Duty, they have kind of a similar feel. Um, Random question. Um, with possible the, answer. <laughs> with the um, with the first Call of Duty, do we know if that had a console release or if that was just PC? Um, actually, Call of Duties one and two were both. I don't have it written down, but Call of Duties one and two were actually only a Microsoft launch. Okay, I thought they were PC first though, weren't well, they? Well, no, the that re- was Medal of Honor. Oh. Remember how I said metal? It's gonna have the same feel as Medal of Honor. Yeah. Oh. Uh, if you go back and look, I'm almost 100 percent positive. If you want to fact check me, Wes, I hope you do. Call of Duty One and Two were both Microsoft launch only. I, uh, I, you are right there. I believe. Just to break something down real quick. Yeah, sure. About just 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 about Call of Duty as a whole. I'm pretty the sure the Call of Duty series as of most May it's ever 2019. Sold. Yeah. Three hundred million yeah. copies. Yeah. Most units ever sold. It is a for a first person shooter. Call of Duty as a whole record for the best yeah. first person shooter game series. Yeah, they're a great game, but don't they also have like six more games than anybody else? Okay, so here's the thing, <laughs> Call of, and I'll get into. I'm it. I'm not saying that that they're great games. I'm just no, they're, they're fantastic games. They also have the numbers on their side. Um, well, you know what? You'll hear about it later. Because <laughs> I mean, who are they up against? I mean, they'd be up, you know. 
Well, I mean, they'd be up well, against... Well, at the uh, time, at the time, they... You, like It was only Medal of Honor. It, it was only Medal of Honor. And, you, like I said, your heavy, dipping. your heavy hitters, your big dogs left and created Infinity Ward. And yeah. Ha-ha, Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... Right, so Call of Duty 2, sorry, that's my fault, um, is October 25th, 2005 was the release date. Um, again, much like the first game, uh, it was set during World War II. Um, cool thing is the difference is you have the option of choosing four soldiers, one being the Red Army, one being the U.S. Army, and then two being the British Army. Hmm. Now, four different four different play styles. Mm, gotcha. He looked confused. You all right? I thought you said you could choose two, and then you listed three. That just fucked me up. <laughs> no, four. You listed four. One. Oh, okay. Russia, U.S. Two for the British. Oh, okay. How many? How many fingers am I holding up? Yeah, um, four. Okay, that boy. Fuck you. <laughs> November seven, two thousand six. You have Call of Duty three. This game takes place in the year of 1990, 19, 1990, no, fuck me, 1944, and contains missions specific to four major Allied campaigns in the Battle of Normandy. Again, you have your options of different play playthroughs with uh, different characters. Yes, Wes. No, I was going to say I'm I'm pretty sure that's the one that kind of uh, I that, think that's that, the one that, that we all started really. Yeah, I mean I played the other ones as well, but I think Call of Duty Three is the one that we collectively started playing together as on a, console as a, on console as yeah. a squad. Yeah, because I don't know, it's just a good game. <laughs> but that's all I got for Call of Duty. When it comes to one, two, and three, again, they yep. were all made by the same uh, same developer, same publisher. Um, this is where it gets. This is where it hits me straight in the feels, boys, because this is where we had lots of love on the consoles of Xbox. <laughs> and in November five of two thousand seven, the year of our Lord, <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Come on. Uh, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was uh, developed, published, released, whatever you want to call it. Um, Such a great game. This literally changed everything for me. I have never cursed out so many little kids in my entire life. And I've never had so many kids that apparently banged my mother. (laughs) Yes. And thought they were better than you. Um, Anyway, November 5, 2007, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, hands down, one of the best Call of Duty games ever. Ever, 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 ever created. Fuck you if you say otherwise. Just to go ahead and just break it down. In a year and a half, it sold 13 million copies. Crazy, right? Fucking crazy. 13 million in a year and a half. Uh, the best part about this game is it breaks away from the World War II genre. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's always lots of fun for the World War II stuff. Um... This is where they said, fuck it, we're changing scenes, boys and girls. Let's fucking throw a loop here. Uh, And this is where they decided to uh, go with a more modern style of... um, I think some of the guns that I remember with that were like the um, the MP5 MP5. and the ACR and uh, the RPD. The ACR was the shit. P90. Oh, my God. P90. Yes. So, anyway, um, this game... Is like I said, this is when they went into the more modern era. Uh, it takes place in actually 2011. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Where uh, the game was actually the game was released in 2007, but it actually takes place in 2011. Hmm. Sorry, that was a that was <laughs> actually a good. spring. My bad. <laughs> um, Anthony playing guitar. Playing guitar. Uh, so here's a little synopsis, really quick. Uh, this is where a radical leader. Uh, has executed the president of an unnamed country in the Middle East and an ultranationalist movement ignites a civil war in Russia. Dude, that game was... Yeah, man, like, that that was one of those games that just completely changed it for us. I mean... It did. It definitely did. And it also kind of, like, as scary as it was at the time because you had... Well, that was that was in 2007. So that... September 11th of our, has already kicked off. Yes. And just, like... All the for crazy years, shit yeah. that was going on in the Middle East, it really, like, that game itself, uh, for me personally, on a personal level, um, really kind of, like, made you think. Like, holy fuck, this is actually crazy. This is just a video game, but this is, like, crazy shit that could pop off at any moment. Yeah. I mean, on top of the fact that the game was called Modern Modern Warfare. Warfare. You know like, I mean? like uh, I mean, it really, I mean, it really, it really sent home the fact of... 100%. Yo, like, like th- th- this seriously could be tomorrow. Exactly. And, yeah. and... For me, I, it changed the view of also first-person shooters mm-hmm. because, like, this is the game that we would legit, I remember, be like, boys, what are you doing tonight? Cool. Call of Duty? Yep. And we would literally yeah. hit Call of Duty 
hours at like seven or eight o'clock at night and just play until the next fucking day. Then we're all drinking we had while we're playing. Of nights of playing till three, oh, four, my or five word. o'clock in the morning, cursing out little kids, having a great time, talking about banging moms. <laughs> um, now here's the thing: Call of Duty has the tendency to release a game every single year, <laughs> and that okay. has become something to their detriment. Exactly. And that being said, I will not go absolutely batshit crazy. With these next couple games. Literally, I'm going to give you the release date and the name of the game. Because I'm not going to go over... You're not going to go talk for four hours about Just Call of Duty? Just Call of Duty. Because that's exactly what this podcast... This podcast could be called Call of Duty. Yeah. Not doing it. Um, So that being said, these are the games that followed uh, in the years from 2000 until 2010. Um, You have Call of Duty World at War, which I actually brought up a little bit earlier. uh, With the dogs. Mm. (laughs) That was released... Dog, my dog. baby dog. <laughs> my baby dog. No, uh, I was thinking Snoop Dogg. Snoop oh no, dog. I gotta show him. That have video. you ever seen the video? I have not seen. Oh, okay, dog. well, Snoop that was dog. released uh, on November eleventh, two thousand and eight. Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two, where it took it to the next fucking level of amazing and sexiness, was November tenth, two thousand and nine. Yes, Fingerman. Before you go on to anything else, we have to pause for the cause here. <sighs> Because Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 also appeared in our controversial uh, controversial gaming moments episode that you were deployed for, so you didn't get to be here. Oh, okay. That being because that was the game that Roll had back that, the time. that was the game that had, if you remember, had that mission called No Russian, where you had the yep. mass shooting in the airport. Bro, that fucking mission st- I, makes so, you super angry. So I have recently, well, not recently, but mo- a couple months ago, I have played and then since beaten. Modern Warfare 2, the remastered edition. Because yeah. remember, we talked about it. It was one of the free games. I downloaded yeah. it. was like, I'm going to play this when I'm not playing chill with the boys. And to this day, I still despise that fucking mission. Yeah. I want to cry. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure I did cry last so, time I played so that So here's mission. the thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Andy, let me oh, no, take no, this, bro. No, no, no. Let, okay. let Andy take this. I got to hear this. this. I want to hear this. Because I can see Wes's face, and he's like, oh, I can't believe you're going to make me relive this for a third time now. Yeah, we're doing it. So I want to hear all the about mission, it. The mission is so it's it's so tough to watch in general that they actually give you the option of turning off that mission when the game mm-hmm. starts so you don't even have to see it. Now, what Wes didn't realize, and maybe he might not even be the only one because I, I clearly shocked his psyche when I told him in the controversial oh, episode. Oh, he fucked my head up when he said When this. you're going through that mission and the mass shooting in the airport, you don't have to kill anybody. No, you, you don't. You don't have to shoot a single person. Not at all. Wes didn't know I that didn't mode know the that. whole airport down. And he felt so I didn't bad know about himself. He was like, wait, I killed all those people and I didn't have to? I was like, no. Remember, no remember the comment earlier about the wet nose? <laughs> Evil. Evil. But he, when, I told, when I told him that, the, he, when we originally had this conversation during the controversial episode, I was wondering was why like, he was silent was like, for so I was like, long. This is, this is towards like the beginning of 2020. He had this look on his face. His eyes were like looking at the ceiling and he looked really confused and he wasn't talking and I was like, what's the problem? He was like, you didn't have to shoot anybody? I was like, no, you could go through the whole thing not shooting anyone. He just goes, fuck. I basically, <laughs> dude. Every, he was, he and was Oprah I, in that thing. It was, you get a bullet, you get a bullet, everybody gets a bullet. <laughs> oh, That's how Wes was in that thing. Oh, so, Wes. Anthony, I, got, like, I went ahead and like I thought about it, and I'm like, not only am I the worst friend. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> apparently, I'm also the worst first-person shooter gamer. Facts. But I don't know how many people. Fuck. There might be some people that didn't actually know that. But I mean, probably yeah, thought the same fair. as you. Like, there I'll was, fail if I don't. And the, the whole and point is, I'm thing, undercover. Because, yeah, Either way, you die at the end. Well, well, once again, I well when I first played it, I didn't know that. That's fair. So I mean, so I figured, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just run with it because look, even I mean, even people undercover now. I'm I mean, gonna make it I mean, fun do, and kill everybody. They, I mean, they do stuff they're not they're, even they're not proud to do them, but they got to do it in order to go ahead and keep their cover. Yeah. And that was my thought when I went ahead and played that mission, mm-hmm. when this motherfucker decides to tell me fucking 10 years later. <laughs> Why couldn't you tell me then? It had to be 10 years. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I sat there and oh, like, like awesome. dude, quite literally for the next 15 minutes, like he just kept on going. He and was I sad. just And dude, yo, I just sat here. I just kind of just, you know I mean, just. Played with his beard and just kind of sat in silence, I disgusted just, with himself. <laughs> I, I basically just, I, I basically just stared into nothing and I'm just like, what's just like, is this who I am? <laughs> oh my God. So good. But I Man, will I say, crisis. I will say that video games and certain video games can do that to you, to where it means where it actually makes you think about yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I don't see you mowing down innocent people in an airport. I appreciate. But I can understand. Says he's evil, but though. I can understand why you'd feel. Yeah, but you already know it. I'm a bad shot. 
That's true. You're <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> but yeah, that that always pops up when you when, if you were to Google most controversial moments in gaming, that's up there in like the top three of the most controversial moments you'll ever see. I mean, and rightfully so. I so mean, I'm just going to talk about the last game I have for Call of Duty. I know I'm going to cut you off do right it. now. Do it, do it, do it. Cut you off at the neck. I could, I could talk about Wes's error forever. So This man just done Ow. smacked his face on the fucking microphone. <laughs> we keeping that in. Uh, the last game I got for the Call of Duty series was Black Ops, which was November 9, 2010. That was a good game. That was a pretty good game. Very good game. It was also a different take on all of first-person shooter military Call of Duty style games. You just gave me letter Kenny vibes, so you guys just said it's a good game. It's a pretty good game. <laughs> All I said is he's a good guy. He's a pretty good guy. Uh, next, Quebec, I'm gonna Quebec. next I'm gonna go into something I know Quebec. Next, I'm gonna go into something that Fuck I know Andy Quebec. will definitely uh, talk about, uh, which is Far Cry. Yes. Um, now Love I game. didn't grab I <laughs> I didn't grab a lot of information on the first one because it really wasn't too much. Oh, it's rough. It was super rough. Uh, Far Cry was developed by Crytek and published by Ubisoft. Crytek. Anybody else remember that? Crisis. Oh, crisis. Crisis. Yeah. Crisis. We were just talking about that last night, too. We were, we were just talking about that. Yep. Cause, yeah, when we were playing Shell. Yeah. Um, this this was the starting point of the Crytek engine, was the original Far Cry. Gotcha. Yeah. So when, when, when the Crytek engine was first introduced, Far Cry... Uh, which was released March 23rd, 2004, if I didn't say that, which I, I definitely didn't. Um, that's when they first introduced the Crytek engine. Uh, Crytek is also a company out of Germany. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. I would have I would have never thought, and if you've never played Far Cry, which I, I have. You did play the original? Well, remember, you told me I should at least try it. Um, the thing is, is, so break this down really quick. No Far Cry game follows itself. They are all independent. They're you all can... independent of each other. Each storyline is its own. Each main. Yeah, nothing flows. Nothing flows. But that's okay. That's a good thing. That's what I want. Especially with Far Cry because each hero and each villain is different for every single game, which yeah. makes yeah. the series beautiful in thing. itself. I mean, I, I mean, I played I played three, four, Primal, and uh, five. Primal. If, if, Primal's fucking out. But I'm saying, though, I'm saying that, yo, yo, with with playing those four games, I mean, it, I mean, at least to some extent, I, I, don't, I don't think I beat any of them, but I mean, it, at least to some extent. <laughs> bro, finish something in your I life, know, bro. I know, Fuck. right? But, I mean, with those, like, I don't, there is no tie-in at all. Now, no. now, there were, I will say that there were rumors that there's a tie-in with six, to um, I think three. Which is the one that has the guy with the scar above his eye? Is that Voss? With that's the, three. With the, that's three. That's, that's three. three. Is that Voss? That's, he's no? got the mohawk and the scar. Yeah, the scar. That's the third one. The scar on, in, in, in like his eyebrow. I forget the fucking dude's name, but he's got the mohawk. He's sitting. Does he on, wear like the red? Yeah, and he's sit, he's, so, sit, he's sitting on the fucking so the beach. Little, so the little Voss. boy with the grenade. That's the third one. Little boy with the grenade. In you mean in the um in that trail in the cinematic trailer for Far Cry Six has the exact same uh scar. I did not Above think about that. He's right. You think maybe he turns into? <gasps> maybe. Us? Into which that would be the first time that they went ahead and actually had. That would had, be really you, cool. You, you, you mean had had some type of timeline. But the, the main thing that I was going to say when you brought up the first Far Cry is if you play the first one. You're going to You probably would have never thought that the rest would turn into what they turned into. Yeah, because. Really? So, it's not the worst game you've ever played, but it, it is nothing not. like the other one. It okay. is, yeah. So. Excuse me. The first game was like. <sighs> it's. 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 it's it's just you got to slug your way through that. You do. Like it, it's there's definitely it's a bubble rough. in my throat. It's rough. But uh it's it, it's definitely not the best of Far Cry games, but however, if you want to experience the Far Cry in its entirety, I highly recommend you start at the first one. And and again, that was one of those hey, he had just tried Far Cry and he's like, "Dude, try this. They have it at GameStop. It's like $19 for the bundle." And that was Far Cry 1, 2, and 3 nice. in a bundle pack. And it had that weird DLC with the one that weird like 80s one the right? dragon the no that one you had to get separately oh okay but Did I know the bundle came as one two and three it was like 20 bucks at the time at GameStop and he's like look don't worry play Far Cry start there you're gonna hate it but just trust me 
enjoy the suck with the first one, play the second one, it gets better, and the third one is outstanding. It's one of the, it's one of those things where really the only reason to do that, because like you said, they don't they're all independent stories. Yeah, is just to actually from playing it and seeing it get to see like how far like how it progressed. Oh, and that and like that's how, exactly like, what it was. You know, that's what, exactly what it was. How much they changed? How much better learned. the engines are per the oh, evolution of the game? Yeah. So because Infinity so here's better. the thing: there everything you know about Far Cry you didn't have in the first one. There was no killing animals. I don't believe nope. for their pelt and upgrading your. Nope. And even stuff, the but well even in the that. even the second one is what second one is when they opened it to open world. But at okay. that time you still couldn't kill animals to upgrade your items and shit like that. That's when you saw that in Far Cry Three. Again, that's not Far in, Cry Three was the one on the island, right? Far Cry Three was the where one you're on like the skydiving and you land in the yes wrong place, wrong time. Yep. So. Which brings us back to Far Cry 2, which was released October 22nd, 2008. Uh, this this one is a little bit different. This is where Ubisoft, um, between Far Cry and Far Cry, Far Cry 2, excuse me, the between those two releasing in between there, uh, Ubisoft actually gained the rights to the Far Cry name. And this is where Ubisoft uh, Montreal... I think that's what I have written down. Just took it in a completely different direction. Yeah. So this is where Ubisoft Montreal took over the Far Cry um, game itself or the name itself, and they made it their own. Um, so Far Cry 2 was a first-person shooter developed by Ubisoft Montreal, and it was published by Ubisoft, the main overall company. Uh, the game takes place in a modern-day Central African nation during Civil War time. Uh, the player takes control of a merc on a journey to locate and assassinate. Do you remember the guy's name? In two, yes. Oh no! There's way. a there's a movie there's a movie named after it, and Bruce Willis uh, plays the main character. Bruce Willis plays the main character. The Die Hard. The starts with a J. Give me another letter. A. One more. C. Jackal. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So you uh, <laughs> your main or Jack off. I figured that was my only <laughs> other option. Fair enough. Ding. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so basically, I was gonna let that one slide, and Wes nope. was all over it. So I Fuck appreciate that. appreciate that, Wes. Uh, so yeah, the the main goal is to assassinate uh, the jackal. Don't come hither with me. Which is I pretty fucking, cool. I I'm vaguely remembering that because and look the the, the so, other the other main antagonists in the other games are so outlandish and crazy. They're the ones you remember first, like Voss. That's the, and, thi- that's and the pin, thing. So pin, ping pin pin. I don't, Ping, I think. In the, Talk that about purple suit, the purple suit in, in Thailand? In, in four? In Th- yeah. I love so, that. And the thing Him. is, is, and I'm right there with you, Far Cry 3 is when they took it to the next... Yeah, they literally skyrocketed the name of Far Cry. They took it to the next level. And the antagonist in each single one of those games is so sadistic in their own right. You never remember the bad guys from Far Cry and Far Cry Two. I and then all I pi- all I picture like whenever whenever and, and and it's the same thing. Whenever Far Cry is brought up, I picture Voss is the mm-hmm. first guy I think of, and yeah. I'm like that motherfucker was sadistic as hell. Far Cry has a great following, and I, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's it's underrated. But tell me, they wouldn't be maybe very 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 close to the top of your list as far as. Um, like character creation, character so, like creation, they're, they're an, like their antagonists oh and their and their God. backstories they have and how they make them. They it's are very abs- very good. It's absolutely insane. Like th- for me, like they make you hate them. That's and that's just it, dude. When I pl- when I first turned on Far Cry Three, and I remember telling you this, I never hated <laughs> a villain or antagonist in any game so much as Far Cry Three. Like I literally, Voss was I fucking hated that dude. I never with did a play three. Fucking pa- bro. So good. He's first, good. The first one I jumped into was four, and then still great. Like, so, so, so the biggest thing I I always think of with Far Cry games is you can jump off a mountain and just glide. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I mean, that's fair. Least, I mean, at, at least from four on, there was always a way to do it. Whether it's parachute. You, yeah, there was always like a, there was always a secondary something. a secondary way to fast travel that wasn't fast traveling per se. No, but it was just but it was just always so fucking cool. Give yeah. me give me with those games and I'm. And like, Obviously, you mean, you remember mean with four, it, you mean I remember with four, you mean going ahead and like seeing the tigers and the elephants. Absolutely, and, remember you know I mean? and just it's just stalking a, you. It's an it open just, world RPG first person shooter style game. It's like, uh, yeah, how are you going to take all those amazing genres and put it in one? And, oh, just look at Far Cry. That's I, how you exactly. did it. I don't know 100%. which. I don't know which game they started it, but I remember Far Cry three. Whichever game, but I'm saying whichever game had the Komodo dragon. That was the oh. scariest fucking thing because you couldn't see them until you were like on top of them and you just hear that weird like hiss. 
oh my god scared the shit out of me every yeah. time every time now, it, so would, it would make it would make more sense that that would be the island just because you mean yeah the third Komodo one. itself I'm, is, I'm almost positive it was the third is an one. island but makes sense uh and here we go the last thing i'm going to jump into wes you're going to have a lot to say on this because i know this is like your go-to thing oh everyone knows where this is going yep where's it going andy borderlands you got it now Here's the thing. From 2000 until 2010, there was only one border game. Well, excuse me, one Borderlands game that was released. Yes, and that was the original Borderlands. Now, with that game, you are also talking about one of the first mm-hmm. looter shooter games. Correct. Which brings something... me. Go ahead, Wes. No, 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 no. Go, no? go Wes. It is something that basically hasn't necessarily been done with. You, you, mean, you mean with these style of games before? Up until this point, you're Up right. Up until this point. And also another really good thing about um, Borderlands was that they they made it seamless for being able to do a multiplayer game. Correct. And then basically have your friends break off to their... You mean, they, they could jump out of your game and you could just continue your campaign leaving like like they were still there. It didn't matter. And I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't actually have any other information okay. in here. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Borderlands itself is an open world action RPG first person shooter. It was developed by uh, Gearbox yes. Software and published by 2K Games. Uh, Now, in this game, you get to play as one of four vault hunters who travel to the planet of... Pandora. Hell yeah. Do we all know the the, the original vault hunters? Oh, fuck. Uh, Mordecai, Brick. Yep. um, Zero. Nope. No, he's he's the second one. Mm -hmm. Um... Oh, who are the last two? I forget the last two, Wes. The Siren Wait, and, oh, and, the, and, and, and the Soldier. Lilith. Yeah, but what are their names? Lilith. Oh, yeah, Lilith. And? and well, wait, I didn't, soldier. I, uh, what, Roland? Yep. Okay, Very thank good. thank you. Okay, so we yes. got him. We got him. I'm not as knowledgeable as you, but I got my things. Uh, this is also the first game that Andy said he would never, ever, ever play because it was cell shaded. We talked about this last week, too. And Wes and I were like, you have to fucking you play it. You're to going to love this oh, game. Oh, changed me. No, I won't because it's cell shaded. <laughs> But here's the whole thing about it. The way that the cell shading is. It looks amazing. It's, but, I mean, it's not. The, it's not it's like not the way you radio would think it. and it's, I mean, it's not like a Breath of the Wild It reminds style. me of a it's comic not, book. It's not as like Abzu, you know what I mean? That's like, exactly. It is a. It's it, like a comic it book. It is comic book style yeah, shading. Exactly. And that's what made the game so amazing in its, in its, in itself. Yes. Um. Yeah, I, I I was gonna continue on with Borderlands, but I mean, fuck, you, we just covered it all. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So like I said, I mean, Borderlands is one of those games to where that um it had one of the one of the unique things about the game is that it had a plethora of weapons available to you. <laughs> plethora. So <laughs> so you had that's usually the word I throw out when that word comes up. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something you learn in health class. It's yeah, exactly that's the, something. That, that, that's her plethora. Oh, so you had word. handguns, shotguns, assault rifles, submachine gun. Yep. Um. And shit, I think there's another one. Sniper rifle. Sniper rifle. Yeah, thank you. Uh, rocket and, launcher. And, and rocket launcher. Yes. So with all of those, you also had at least in the original, I think you had four or five four. different. Okay. Yeah. Four. You could carry four. Oh yeah. No. No. I, I meant um uh, makers. Of the, you mean like Jacobs, Molly, Juan, Torg, Vladoff. I think that was it. Yeah. I mean, and Jacobs. I mean, I, I mean, eventually it moved. Home. He said that. Oh, you said Jacobs. Yeah. Yeah, he oh. did. And then I mean, when like. They went from, I mean, they went from having basically tens of thousands of options with guns because of <laughs> to because the of what you could do. Borderlands Three, which was millions? like millions, billion, billion. Okay. There is there is there, I, there I stand is corrected. there is quite. Well, that's the whole thing because Borderlands Two was over a million variations of guns. That's right. And then with Three, they said there's over a billion. It's crazy. Now forgive me if you said because I did kind of freaking black out for like a second. But since we're talking about these things and and the effect they've had on on first person shooters. Was Borderlands the first looter shooter? Yes. Or is that okay? So Borderlands, that's a big thing. Borderlands is considered the yeah. first looter shooter, and from there you ended up with you mean with other games to where that they like um, continuously throughout the game they drop better and better loot for you to go ahead and be able yeah. to use like like Destiny. Destiny now uses that same style of um, of gaming to where that you mean you mean the. The far, you mean, you mean the farther you get into the game, you can pick up a gun by killing somebody that's going to be better than the gun you had prior. Yep. As opposed to you only get that gun after you finish the mission. You mean that's what you, you mean that's what you mean that's that's the big difference they had with this whole quote unquote looter shooter style. Right. Touche. Um, now I'm just going to get into some honorable mentions because had I done every single game. <laughs> 
I would have been here. I could have done my own show for like two fucking hours. We'll walk out. Let you do it. No, fuck out of here. Go, go away. <laughs> um, so these are just some of the some of the honorable mentions that I came across um, that I remember playing myself during this uh, era, along with others uh, that were mentioned to me. So there was Battlefield Bad Company one and two. Fuck yeah. Now, that was where you could ride around on that beach in the golf cart? Another thing about the battlefields were that it was a completely destructible world. Correct. And that, and that was legit. And that, that was, was some, That was something that was never done in in these open world. And that was always. Sorry, not open world, but you, you mean, but these deathmatch style games. Correct. And that was always the biggest difference between Call of Duty and Battlefield. Yes, Battlefield sir. was always Jokey. completely. Com- well, no, Battlefield was always completely destructible. Everything was. You could. could I'm be just saying, destroyed. Bad, bad Company was. Bad Company was, I mean, it was barely, it was very Suicide Squad. Correct. It was very much. Guardians of the Galaxy <clears throat> of, you, yeah. you, you, I mean, of the first person shooter world. Right. And if you think about it, Call of Duty was more geared towards multiplayer online play. Yes. Um, and then I have Battlefield 1942 and 1943, which both both play, uh, both play take place during World War II. Nice. Um, Bioshock 1 and 2. Yep. Which were good games. Um, these Big games, Daddy. Yeah. These games I played until I was fucking blue in the face. Left for Dead one and two. We fucked around with Left for Dead a lot back in the that day. That kind of, that like took horde mode to the next level. It Correct, because really the whole game was basically horde mode. Yeah. Correct. Uh, they, those games were so much fun. Um, and then we have the Metal Van- Metal. Uh, excuse me, Medal of Honor franchise, which I'm not going to list every single game because they literally started in like 2000 and went all the way until 2010. Again, falls in falls in line with the Call of Duty franchise where they released a game every single fucking and year. And actually, they do have one that's out now that's part of the VR system. That's and they're um, actually going to be, fun fact, I just checked, they're going to be releasing one in 2020. That's sick. Which is... That's a, yeah. that's the first... Crazy. That's the first memory I have of a... Um, Sitting on the PC like playing a, a, Metal like of Honor. Game. No, not no. It wasn't. It wasn't PC because I never played games on PC. It was whatever one came out on console oh, where your wow. very first mission was wow. uh, the beach in Normandy. Yep, wow. and that's that's where that started. I don't know if that was Allied Assault or that was. I'm pretty which, sure it was the first one, was. one, which was Allied but, Assault. Uh, were you? Yeah, were you like? I think you start like on a ship and yep. like the alarms are going off, yep. and then you get in a little boat and you storm the beach. Oh, and correct. Fuck. And the yeah. thing, the yeah. funny thing is, is that's that, the first war game I ever played. So, and I'm actually about to get into online multiplayer, which is actually my next segment. Fun fact, uh, that is where I started my online multiplayer journey was with Medal of Honor. I just tapped my microphone in my bed. Why'd you do that? I don't know, because I wanted to hit <laughs> something, but I was, cause I was so excited. But I started my journey with uh, Medal of Honor on the PC, online multiplayer. Really? Absolutely. Wow. F- I've never yeah. played an online game on PC. And I rarely ever played a game on PC. No, I did. Mind you, this, was, this, was, this was 56K dial-up, dog. This is... <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is that terrible noise? Sorry, and that someone just crashed. <laughs> they did. I, well, no, I do remember playing because actually my first one, I believe, was one of the uh, modern warfares, and uh, Noodle. You know, what I mean, your brother-in-law, Mike. Mm-hmm. He went ahead and uh, he, you know, he got me into it because I, I, mean, I watched him play like SOCOM and all that other type of shit. That was a game and a half, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I watched him play that type of stuff, and then you yeah, mean we all got together and and got uh got modern war or not modern warfare. We got one of the Call of Duties, and then it didn't work well for me. I mean, so I'm like, fuck. So I return it, and then I'm like, well, how do I game with my friends? And then that's when I started hanging out with Anthony. And then I mean, Anthony was one of the first guys that had I mean, an Xbox. Yeah, I, that I, I knew about. That. So from then, I went ahead. Like when when the 360 came out, I picked that up, bro. That was that, that, just, yeah, I mean, that started was a everything. game changer. Into which we can actually go into. I mean, what you want to talk about now with the um with the online? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's what I'm. That's which yeah. is now which is now the Xbox selling point, Live, which is now the selling point for a lot oh of those games. Oh boy, did I just? Oh, I didn't lose my nose. I thought I lost my ah. nose. That was like you earlier. Okay, so look, listen, we are a console based um podcast. podcast. Uh, however, I I will say this: online multiplayer did not start with the consoles. Absolutely, okay. Not. But Can't us, lie. exactly. So, thing is, is us being a console based podcast. That is what I'm going to touch base on. So, yeah. please don't try and correct me. Like we know, it did not start. Here. It did not start here. I know <laughs> this, but this is where it started for consoles. Yeah, don't add us. That's all. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm gonna fuck you up. Anyway, I won't. I love you guys. You You're the best. <laughs> um, however, I will start here that if it was not fi- not for, I said fire, if it was not for Microsoft, 
uh, themselves as a company, we would not have online multiplayer for the consoles. We'll just leave it that. Or well, I mean, nope. yeah, I mean, we'll leave it at that. How long it, it would have taken? It wouldn't be where it is right now. Correct. Yeah. If it was not for Xbox Live, so this is Pioneers? this is some information that I that I drummed together. Uh, as Microsoft developed the original Xbox console, online gaming was designed as one of the key pillars for the greater Xbox strategy. Strategy. I had this problem two weeks ago. <laughs> you did. Strategy, not strategy. Anyway, <laughs> Sega had made an attempt to capitalize on the ever-growing online game scene when it launched the Dreamcast video con- game console in 1999, including online support as standard. We talked about that. Yep. We talked about that. I, I forget what the episode was. We went ahead and said that um, Dreamcast was the first one to actually have Correct. Uh, online online capable playing. With the SegaNet service in North America and Dream Arena in Europe. Nevertheless, due to the lack of widespread broadband... Wow, that, that could have been really Just, fucked up had I fucking said any quicker. <laughs> Broadband ad, uh, adaption at the time. The Dreamcast shipped with only a dial-up modem while later released uh, Broadband Adapter was neither widely supported nor widely available. Hmm. DLC was available through limited in size due to narrow band connection and size limitations of the memory card. The PlayStation 2 at the time did not initially ship with a built-in network capabilities. Wes, you and I talked about this yes, before the cast. Microsoft, however, hoped that the Xbox would succeed where the Dreamcast had failed. The company determined that the intense online gaming required the... Uh, use of broadband connection and the storage space of hard of, of the hard disk drive. Do you guys remember buying the Wi-Fi adapter that plugged into the back of the fucking 360? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. And you know, it had that little, little fucking antenna. antenna. <laughs> that, that little <laughs> yeah. yo, 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 it was yo, Don't it was, get it was me white. Started. It was little white piece. Yes. It had a little gray antenna. Fuck yes, dog. Yes, God, dude. Like, like I miss that all is, of that, dude. That is the first thing I think of when you're talking about all this. Best times in life ever. <laughs> okay, really quick. 360. Let's be real. Remember the headsets, the wireless headsets. You just hit the button and boop. Yeah. yeah. Now you got all this wired shit, and you're like, what the fuck? Once again, dude. Like. If it wasn't for what Xbox did with the you know, I mean, with the multiplayer plus the online stuff, like we we truly wouldn't have what we do today now. Hundred percent, and it's all because of Microsoft. And yes. I appreciate that. I might be a PlayStation fanboy, but at the end of the day, if it wasn't for Microsoft, I wouldn't have what I have. Yeah, plain and simple. Absolutely. Uh, and I gotta find where the especially fuck I left in off. That, especially in that era, because in that era you had the 360 versus the PS2, and the 360 won by leaps and bounds. Correct. Uh, back to where I left off. Yes. Um, if it wasn't for the storage and space of the hard drive that came with the Xbox, uh, and thus these features would be vital to a new platform. Uh, this would allow not only the significant DLC, such as new levels, maps, weapons, challenges, characters, and could be quickly downloaded and stored. Um, but it would also make it possible to standardize bandwidth intensive features such as voice communication. Um, Back when they were like five kilobytes was a DLC. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Uh, Based on this reasoning, the console included a standard Ethernet port in order to provide, sorry, connectivity to common broadband networks, but but did not include a modem or any dial-up support. And its online service was designed to support broadband users only. Uh, At the time, critics scoffed and they uh, cited that poor scoffed. Did, that's that's what I've got. Scoffed, scoffed and I just like the cited word. that pro, poor broadband adaptation at the turn of the century. Um, basically, they launched uh, their Xbox Live service in November 15 of 2001. At the time, it was unnamed. Um, it wasn't until the summer of 2002 when it was finally given the name uh, during E3 in 2002 uh, of okay. Xbox Live. It's so wild to me that like. I never realized just how close that was to the 90s. And the craziest, th- that's just it though. Like to me, I feel like it was like 05. <laughs> listen, listen, it's been 18 years since Xbox Live has been out. The craziest part about it is 2002 doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Yeah. At least for, uh, for yeah. us, yeah. for us speaking, I guess, because we're old fucks. But still, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just crazy that it's been 18 years. At the same time, I mean, think about where we were from there to where we are now. You know I mean, you know I mean, just, just going ahead and having that ability of playing these games with our friends online. You know I mean, they're at their house, you're at your house. Now look at what Microsoft has done with 
Game Pass. Look what they've done with going ahead and having that contract with EA Play. You know what I mean? Look at what they've done with going ahead and buying Bethesda. Constantly, like, you know I mean? Don't Const- fucking get me started on Microsoft I'm and just Bethesda. I'm constantly trying to raise the bar. I'm, that's the point I'm just trying to make. Envelope. I'm, yeah. it's, I mean, it's they're more, not resting on their laurels. <laughs> no, no. They're, they're continuously trying to go ahead and build all of these new things. And it's something that I'm just, I keep on looking at it going, you know I mean, like, once again, dude, PlayStation, you know I mean, you know I mean, they, you mean they have you mean you mean they they have the games you mean, you mean absolutely the games one hundred percent but you I mean Microsoft's definitely when it comes out to building a community they yes. are definitely raising the bar and the thing is is people people including myself I always I always catch myself saying that PlayStation is great and you literally just said that um but at the end 100%. Of the day, at the end of the day like I said at, at the beginning of the uh, segment for uh, how multiplayer and stuff like that came to be if it wasn't for Xbox. I mean, let's let's be honest. And there wouldn't there wouldn't be the online multiplayer that we have yeah. today. I mean, that's I mean that I'm, fucking. I mean, simple. think about where it started. It started with Halo. Absolutely. With, with Xbox itself, it started with Halo. You mean having a game that was that 100%. monumental at Absolutely. that time? Absolutely. Absolutely. But correct. to piggyback off what you were saying, it's you know we're the ones that. Granted, there each company has makes some decisions that we don't necessarily always jive with. But true, when they do things like this, we're the ones that benefit because think like you just said. PlayStation has always had the games. What did Microsoft focus so much on this year? Is making sure this console is making sure that they have the games. So it's that healthy competition now. Them, you know, moving forward and always constantly trying to move the needle and push things forward with you know creating a community. I wouldn't be surprised if Sony starts to try to take a page out of that book and they try to get better in that respect. So I mean, they're, they're I constantly mean, pushing each other. I to, mean, they, uh, I mean, they actually just did with. It, I mean, at least in the anime world, because Sony did just buy Crunchyroll. So. Which we can talk offline about that. <laughs> I'm the only one out of the three of us that actually watch anime here. I, I watch well, some, but I'm, well, I mean, I highly I watch older stuff. You mean, even like I mean, not older. I mean, I, I watch like mid '90s type stuff right now. I mean, like, like I just got done with like Thundercats and shit like that. So that doesn't count. Shut the fuck up. It's anime. I'm gonna kick your ass later. Probably should. <laughs> so <laughs> we can talk <laughs> offline about that, but that is awesome. And and so here's the thing too. I think I think because of that purchase. PlayStation is going more the role of like Microsoft has already done and they're going for more of like a streaming service on top of their gaming service that they already have. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and they have to to be able to compete with Xbox. Like Absolutely. Everything they do, it's constantly. Absolutely. Each one is making the other one have to raise their game. Now, here's yes. the thing. I and the look. second they stop doing that is when we suffer. And then the funniest thing about it is that even with You're even right. with all of that happening, this in 2020, the Switch still stole the show. Because the switch is so good. Over, yeah, but think of it. During the this year, whole pandemic, the, 20, the switch is where it's at, dog. Over the year of 2020, the switch has sold more copies than both. Dude, because the switch is just something. The switch. It is so fucking we've, unique. We've talked about this in the past. Exactly, it's unique, and Nintendo has their own little niche that just fills the void for everybody. Yeah, and if actually, you really think about it, because it fills that void of having an entertainment console and a handheld. And actually. Um, Microsoft is trying to go ahead and do the same thing. Oh, give me, don't. Give me right now. Well, no, no. The no, reason because... I say don't is because other companies have tried, like PlayStation. Look, I have a PlayStation. They tried PS, twice. I have a PS Vita. They did the PSP and then they PSP, did the PS yeah. Vita, which I have. What they I'm both talking... fucking suck so much donkey <laughs> dick. They drug the schnuts over fucking everybody's face and was like, all right, we're going to try mobile gaming. It's so good. Fuck what you. I'm, Leave it to what Nintendo. What I'm talking more about is the fact that I'm still of, talking over Wes. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it, it, it's fine. You're good. With um, with you I mean with Game Pass, being able to go ahead and do it on your mobile phone, and then and then just all, all you need is you I mean your phone connected Bluetooth wise to yeah. your to, to your gaming controller. Don't do and it. And you can play. Yeah, I mean, I've do tried. It. Don't do it. I've done it. Don't do it. So here's the thing: if you're gonna, if Microsoft is gonna do it properly, they need to create their own ta- uh, tablet or like some kind of something that is specific to xbox do you know what i'm saying if they created a tablet that is affordable say in the range of like 299 to 399 it sounds outrageous it sounds outrageous but if you not really right so switch is 300 but that's what i'm saying if you create a tablet that's meant specifically for gaming mobile gaming at that that you can attach your microsoft account to and still use your controller on i think then they have they have a good way forward Yeah. yeah you're right all right, so we handled everything that had to do with first-person shooters from the beginning of it up until the modern realm. So now let's go ahead and actually break down our top fives. 
All right, so when it comes down to my uh, number five, I have to go with the COD <clears throat> series. I'm going ahead just putting that one within just a whole. No, yeah. that's a that's a that's a Fair. solid statement because as it's, a, it's a blanket statement. But the fact of the matter is, is all, it just shows they're all good. Exactly, we're talking first person shooter. The first one of the first things you're going to think about, about modern wise is Call of Duty. Well, yeah, I mean, on top of the fact that I mean, for me, I mean, that was my first dive into boom. You know what I mean? Going ahead and playing, absolutely you know I mean? playing these games. Yeah. For me, I went way off the fucking grid. Well, let's hear it then. And I love it. Unfortunately, you didn't get to play this with us because it was years before I even met you. But there was this game called Close Combat First to Fight. I have played that. It was well, you, unfortunately you didn't get to play with us, but <laughs> it was um, you right. It was uh, it was a game based on the U.S. Marines, and what I loved about what you could have four player split screen. I played it with John, Jake, Matt, you, like basically everybody I know, but you because I hadn't met you yet, but. We always used Whole to put crew. it on. We always used to put it on the highest difficulty. And what I loved is that you got like realistic service medals that you would get. You know, if you if you made it to the end of the thing, mm -hmm. you know, sustaining damage, you were able to get a purple heart. And you know, it was you know, it was super tough. It was as realistic as I could get at the time. And I just remember having a lot of fun playing it. Never beat it, but I remember having a lot of fun. So I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Wes. Um, it's definitely Call of Duty, but however, it's more modern because it's remastered. There you go. Um, it's okay. not that I didn't enjoy the original, but being able to have the capability to play the new Call of, or well, sorry, the old Call of Duty remastered on the newer consoles, PlayStation Four, Xbox One. Um, it just gave me, it gave me that, it gave me that old school feel of happiness again. Do you know what I'm saying? Old school feel with a new school. That look. old school nostalgia. You know what I mean? Yeah. But with exactly with the new stew, the new stew. Cause we're, we cook and stew over here, y'all. <laughs> the new school look of what the consoles could produce at the time. So, yeah, uh, I went the same route as you. Um, it's definitely Call of Duty for my number five. All right, so my number four is another one that just kind of just wraps everything up. But I can, I can actually go ahead and make it like one particular game. So I, I probably will just do that. I went ahead and said the Halo Master Chief Collection, but I'm going to... That's gonna, fair. I'm going to specify to say Halo 3. Oh, hell yeah. Because Halo 3 was just one of those games that is yeah. just a monumental game for everybody. And, I mean, just the story, the music. Mm -hmm. The music for me, I think, and I don't know if it was the same for you, but the music for me oh. was key. It's the tits. Yeah. Like, as soon as you heard that shit, you were like, like as yes. soon as you heard, like, that main song start to play. Yeah. It was just nothing but fucking ear to ear smile, and you're like, "Shit's about to go down, awesome, motherfucker!" Dude, yeah, no, nah, it was. I, I mean, like I said, I said that I said the whole Master Chief Collection, but three was probably the one that probably topped the list. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, number four was Borderlands Two. Right Good after choice. all, the, after all the pushback I had not playing it, I I played the first one. I didn't play it as much, but Borderlands Two is really what like took it to the next level for you, me. You played that one. In, with two different characters and got them both up like 65 or some shit, right? Yeah, I had like ultimate Vault Hunter mode on both. Yeah. And dude, I <laughs> I loved every fucking second of it, man. I uh, I haven't gotten to play three as much. I didn't play one as much and you guys kind of more or less told me to stay away from the pre-sequel. So, yeah, it, it's not that it was bad. It's not, it, it was by no means was it bad. The game it was play, good. The, the game itself wasn't bad. It was the fact of the microgravity, I believe, became I like an that. issue for me personally. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. Actually, it, again, if, if, if you're talking about Borderlands between pre sequel Borderlands and Borderlands 2, Wes and I have thrown down on all three of those games simultaneously with different characters. Pre-sequel and have was the first the game. one. You and I went ahead and we, you mean, we both said we can't do this. Yeah. Like, we legit made it halfway through the game. We were like, yeah, fuck it. We're done. We'll just wait. And Fair that's exactly what we did. It, and which, unfortunately... I mean, look, I mean, I mean, it felt weird. It yeah. felt very weird to go ahead. I mean, because I, I am a diehard fucking Borderlands person, so... No. We... And... No, you're not. No, he can't be. Huh. I, I was really, gonna say everybody that listens I really knows need, that. I really need a Borderlands tattoo. I really don't. I mean, how just long the, has it been? Just a ball symbol. Oh, oh, are no. you gonna get the the? Uh, are you I want I want glyphs. I, I really I do. thought so. You know, I want fucking put, glyphs. put a little bit of Maya on you. I, oh my god, dude, yes. So, Ant, what's your number four? Border, uh, no, Jesus Christ, not Borderlands. I'm not following you, Jesus. For fuck's sake, <laughs> Battlefield, Battlefield as a whole, Battlefield nice. as a whole. Great just one. because, like we brought up earlier in the. Uh, in, in our talks, that it was fully destructible. At the time, best thing ever. Best yep. thing ever. You could shoot a building, there it goes. 
come come, come, yeah, come that was, crumbling down. See, that was, that that was, was really that was really cool because I mean in the multiplayer, like you could Same just, thing. you could decide to go ahead and just start mowing down a wall on a building mm -hmm. because you knew if somebody was in there, eventually with what you're doing, with enough bullets, that whole thing's coming down and they're Absolutely dying. Absolutely hundred percent. Yes. No, uh so God, sorry. No. I was gonna say one of my favorite moments that I have in online gaming period was you know i played bad company with matt a little bit a little bit of the online but not much to be able to you know notice anything but i believe it was battlefield whatever battlefield introduced that one mode where you had like 60 some people on there or something it was a large oh, map it was I, like global war that was my two that no i think it was it had to have at least been four it had no it was battlefield it was battlefield was so it was definitely sorry, i was thinking bad company my bad no no it was Fine. definitely battlefield four which actually came out before battlefield one yeah. Sounds fucking awkward. Fun, F fun fact. Fun. Well, Battlefield 4 came out before Battlefield 1. I, I played that game, and I was still playing that game like everything else that I played. I was always a Call of Duty guy, so I always felt safe in buildings and this and that. And I remember playing that Absolutely. game. I ran into a building. As I'm in the building, a tank... Like, these people were together. I went in a building. This tank rolled up, started shooting the building. I thought it was fine. Matt's like, you might want to get out. So... <laughs> The tanks shoot the building, <laughs> so I get so out. I go to the I top of the building, and then they fly a freaking jet over and start trying to pick me up from the top of the building. I was like, this is next level war shit that I'm just not prepared <laughs> for. But it makes you think I it's fucking, it. it's awesome, right? Yeah, it's so cool. To, I like, fucking love it. And then the conversation started to be, man, because Battlefield's campaigns were never anything to snooze at. They were good, but like Call of Duty always seemed to take it a little bit. And you're like, man, could you imagine if Call of Duty had that in their game? The thing yeah. is, is I'm pretty sure Battlefield's campaigns were longer than Call of Duty. They were, and they Probably. were good. They were good. I mean, which was one of the things that always bothered me about uh, Call of Duty. I mean, like I've talked about it multiple times. I love Call of Duty games. I love their campaigns, but their campaigns are short as fuck. Yeah. And you not being a you not being is, a is that didn't, anymore. That I'm didn't not, start happening until I'm not a, I'm not a multi player guy when it comes down to call of duty anymore so you're I mean, paying so, like 60 bucks for eight hours a game here's, and here's, i can't do it here's the thing though that didn't start happening until modern warfare true so if you remember call of duty one two and three had super long campaigns they they did have online multiplayer support but their their the premise behind the game was always geared more towards the actual individual mm -hmm. single campaign yeah. not towards online multiplayer modern warfare itself took that to the next level and pff, that's when you saw you aside from halo that's when you really saw online multiplayer start to take off was yeah. modern warfare this modern warfare that so uh my number three is again that we talked about we broke into before we jumped into anthony's modern era <laughs> and it is my Best wife's ever. favorite game it is the favorite game that we got when it came down to asking my friends on facebook golden eye 007 oh so such an amazing game. Um, Graphics-wise, I mean, at the time, it was on point. Exactly. 100%. It was amazing. Yep. Even, even the graphics were amazing. Uh, the Golden Gun. I mean, we talked about the quest for the Golden Gun. Dropping down from the from the bathroom and everybody knowing if somebody's up there, everybody goes to the bathroom to wait to shoot them because, you know what I mean? It was, That's where you're coming out of. It was the only drop point. There was yeah. no other drop point. Yep. And then also, like I said before, my wife enjoying playing his odd job and then watching everybody slide across on one knee down, going ahead and trying to find her because the vertical shooting in that game wasn't wasn't where it should be. So good. So, that's yeah, a, number three for me is Golden Knight 007. Now, while they're all great in their own right, number three for me is Halo 2 yeah. because that was Ooh. the game that the energy sword was introduced. And that, that was the and Arbiter. That, and that, that was game. my favorite. Didn't you play that, as the Arbiter in that game? You had the option you to choose you, you, either you or. Yeah, okay. And I always chose the Arbiter because you It's think, a completely different story. Well, not only is it a different story, but you're used to playing after you're done in the first game. You've already played as Master Chief, so it gives you a completely different option and a different route to take. Being able to play as one of the superior alien covenant, right? Because if you think about it, the Arbiter was only bestowed upon those who were superior yes. in the covenant. It gives you the option to play as an alien. Why yeah. wouldn't you take that? You've already yeah. played as Master Chief. Take the different route. I uh, like True. that. That, and that was like, sword was fucking tits. That was like running around with I, a golden gun. I hated playing against people him. like me. <laughs> I hated against well people like you and playing against you because when you oh had, in multiplayer oh yes when you had the f split screen multiplayer when you had the sword yeah bye motherfucker I was fucked I could never I could never kill him yeah that's well fair. That, that so that was the start of a lot meanwhile, of meanwhile me. if I had the sword. I'm running around. Everybody I died every could, time. Everybody could fucking kill me. Yeah. Fucking that, asshole. That was the, f Sorry, you know, boy. that was when online gaming really no, started not. to take off for me. And that's, I said this last week, that game was when I first started Sorry. to learn that there's levels to this shit. Got caught in my mustache. What? Oh, no, no, no. 
he sounded like Le- I mean, Hannibal Lecter when he was going ahead and like talking about drinking some Savant. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, Andy. So, Halo Two is also the start of like learning that whole there's levels to this shit thing mm-hmm. because I was pretty hot shit amongst my own friends, but then you go online and it's like, oh. So this is what it's like to really be good at this game. It was something that we talked about with Alex from the Spaghetti Boys. You know I mean, when illegal to him with Mortal Kombat, he's you know I mean, he, you know he's good amongst his friends. But when he actually tried doing tournaments, he's like, "Oh, I don't match against these guys." Fun fact: Halo Two was actually one of the first games ever for online multiplayer to introduce new maps uh, and all that kind of stuff. So like Halo had the, like basically every time they would do something, they would they always introduce something new. And Halo was actually Halo Two was the first company to do that. Nice. And I don't yeah. know about you guys, well, but first game, not company, because it's the same company. First yeah. game. Sorry. I, I don't know about you guys, but when we played Modern Warfare Two, when you play a lot of these, tur, or when you play an, a lot of these, <laughs> uh, play, <laughs> you play a lot of these other games online. What do you get pissed at, dudes that are camping? Campers. Where's the first time you remember that shit? Halo for mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. People would just be. I never knew that that's what it was called. Sniper rifle. Sniper rifle. Million miles away. The, whatever that level was that ass. was like all blue and it was just that, yep. that little place in the center and you could like that's jump why, up on the one tower and here's sit on the, the side. That's why I like Battlefield a little bit more if you think about it. They're the ones that actually put the game mechanics into play when it came to uh, speed and air density and fucking the drop of the bullet and shit like gravity. that. Gravity. You literally had to play it properly. Like physics if I'm made fucking sense. if I'm a sniper and I'm five hundred yards away, I have to calculate for that. Yeah, physics made sense. I loved it. Actual game physics. Before we get to your number three, best moment playing Halo Two that I liked once I realized that I sucked was <laughs> or I wasn't as good as everybody else. Might as well just give people a laugh, especially in uh levels like that one blue one I was talking about. Chuck one of those sticky grenades straight up in the air, let it hit me in the head, and then just run into a group of people. Believe it or I not, love doing it. Believe it or not, I don't know if it was Halo Two or Halo Three. You there was actually an online achievement for that. You yeah, stick a sti- you yeah. stick a sticky grenade to yourself, and then you kill a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. there was actually an online achievement for that because I got it. So what's your number three? Ant? <laughs> My number three, and I'm pretty sure you guys actually might be surprised. Titanfall, the that Titanfall does, series that one and two. Me. Not I that it's not that it's bad. I, just I never no, no, no. played. I, I never played two, but one was definitely fun when I played. Here's why that wall running was the tits, and that's why it took a lot of really cool elements from other games. Yes, right. So the wall wall running came from Call of Duty. I thought it went the other way, didn't it? Um, it cause, cause no, I don't think it did. No, didn't no, Call of Duty did. then? Did use it go it backwards? Call it went the other Duty, way. Call, Call of Duty, Duty used it. it in Ghosts from Titanfall. They used it in Call of Duty Ghosts, right? Right, you're right. But you had the option to bring in a mech. Yes. I mean, come on, dude. Tell a me that, fucking yeah. ginormous robot where you can just mow motherfuckers and, down. I mean, Hello. On, I mean, with you being an anime fan, basically you have your own Gundam. You yes, I mean? you're 100% correct, and you get to customize said Gundam. Yes. And you definitely I mean, got chubbed up when you would hear that sound. Just boom. And, and you know what? I feel bad because the Titanfall games themselves got a bad rap because... The first one did. Yeah, because the campaign was just absolute trash and shit well, like that. Well, with the first one, the campaign was all basically online multiplayer. Exactly. Same reason you and I didn't get Battlefront. Exactly. It was like the same yes. thing because yes. you couldn't However, play it just by yourself. The game, if, if now that I look back on it and stuff like that, the games in themselves were so much fun. And they were so outside of the norm. I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. And I, I, I remember sitting down. I played for a lengthy period of time just by myself. The online multiplayer and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. ideally, they had a great, they had a great idea and put it into motion. Unfortunately, it just didn't take, it just didn't take hold like they, they probably wished it. would I feel have. like maybe it just wasn't the right time. Absolutely, yeah, you may, you may absolutely. Free. Now, next gen systems may, may, maybe could be. We did. I mean, look, you I did mean, bring right, up the. I think it was two weeks ago. You did bring up one of the games that's going to be releasing is a mech style game, correct? Yes. So. And hey. also, uh, Titanfall one and two are both on Game Pass right now. That's right. I remember so, seeing that. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Th- that's an awesome number three, dude. I I I actually love that choice. Hell yeah. Uh, my number two is actually a game that I've been playing a little bit more now, oh. and actually it's a uh, Destiny two. I was waiting for him to say Borderlands. <laughs> Destiny three. two. So Destiny two is um, it is leaps and bounds better than the first one. Just because of um, what you can do in the game and the way the ghost works and the guns, the upgrading. Like, I mean, they've, they, they've really built a beautiful system on how to continuously work a DLC. Now, with saying that, I do have a caveat. I despise the way that they first ran the DLCs in these games. If you did not own the DLCs in the games, you, could, you basically could not run strikes. 
And strikes are one of the biggest ways that you could go ahead and actually upgrade your gear and really grind. Right. So, you mean strikes, nightfalls, all that type of shit. Yes. If you did not own the DLCs, you couldn't do that stuff because you couldn't run those, you mean, you mean, you mean the DLC uh, strike maps. And, you mean, and, they, and, and okay. they were all part of the random run. So, <clears throat> like, I, I fucking hated it. I absolutely fucking hated it because <laughs> I enjoyed the games, but I... I mean, I'm not going to consistently put, you know what I mean, $60, $40 into this shit, you know what I mean, every, I mean, every every year, every six months, whatever the case may be. Now, however, <laughs> now they are on Game Pass, which is something that I pay for anyway. So, now I get to play all the DLCs. And I'm actually loving it a lot. I, I get to play a new version of the game called Gambit. And the main thing about Gambit is that it is a four... Four player versus four player, and the biggest thing about it is that you're not actually playing against the other team. You are in a race with the other team to get to what's called a prime evil before and defeat the prime evil before they do. But you get to go ahead and like drop what's called blockers, which are just different versions of some of the enemies you normally see, like Cabal and Vex and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you need to take them out in order to be able to bring up this thing that you get to go ahead and like drop these moats into. And it's it's actually a really, really fun way of playing the game. Nice. And actually, it's the only it's like the, it's, it's like one of two versions of, the, of part of the game that actually have a more than three person player um, version of it. Mm -hmm. Cause I just, I, there's nothing I hate about the game. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the fact that it's a three person um, campaign run. If I mean, if, if you want to run with your friends, I think that's stupid as fuck. Nobody, nobody only has two other friends they want to play a game with. You have multiple, at least four. You know I mean, I mean, you should be able to run with four, you know I mean, three people at a minimum with including, and then also yourself. But yeah, so um, Destiny Two is definitely mine, even with my little diatribe that I talk about how much of the stuff I hate. But I do love the way the dude, the the style of the game, the artistic, you know, what I mean, way of the game, the music. I mean, the music is very Halo esque. Mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I believe the first, uh, the first or second one uh, is Bungie. So you, know, you, know, you mean so? It, you mean so? It gives oh, you that. I don't remember. But I mean, like, dude, there there is so much about the game that is that is amazing. So yeah, Destiny Two is definitely my number two. Uh, my number oh, two. Yeah. You're probably gonna be the best one to help me with this because I we couldn't remember. I heard butt first. I why heard, am I? I why too. do I have to be the butt, dog? Um, I don't know. But Fuck. We whatever. We couldn't quite remember exactly which one it was. Um, it's either Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare Two. Which one? Oh yeah. Started the tactical nuke. Was that Modern Warfare Two? Because it's it's whatever. I thought, I thought we looked. It's this whatever up. one we all played together the most. Well, we played all. We played both Online. Modern Warfare. Warfare and Warfare Two Nuketown. together. Where's Nuketown? Not it's it's not. Mm. We decided it's not that one because you couldn't find the one that I was talking about. Because I got the yeah. I got because the Nuketown nuke. definitely had the nuke. I got the tac sure, but I got the tactical nuke in that game where you had the office complex and everyone used to go underneath those steps. Whatever game that is is the one that I want my number two. I just keep forgetting which one. Mm. <laughs> but uh, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare. Okay. The first one. Okay. Yeah, so, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, how to get tactical nukes. <laughs> so it's like what I keep getting. <laughs> so it's not the second one. Okay. So, yeah, Modern Warfare is my number two because still to this day when it comes to online gaming, that's probably the most badass moment I've had was getting 25 kills in a row. Bro, I remember that because I was in that fucking game. I was in the server and on your team at that time. And I, I It was the craziest I, fucking thing I ever remember seeing. I never thought I I would know somebody that got that. I've I gotten close, I retired. but I never got it. Oh, I, I never got that. I retired after that. I was like, I'm not going to get better than this, so I'm just going to leave it. this on Wasn't a high that note. Like, is that like 20? You had to get like 25. 20, 20. Okay, so you had to get 25 kills. I mean, there were times where I've gotten 18, 19 kills in a row. Never. And I think never. Y'all helped me, though, because I, yeah, got, I got to the point where it was like 17, 18, and I was under those steps, and I was like, people know I'm here, so I'm going to need y'all to fucking protect me for a minute and I would, every now and again I would pop out get one more kill Man. and then get like the chopper I or whatever remember, you needed. Main thing I remember about those types of games and and like I mean I'm I, th I think my best my best streak was maybe 15. No oh, yeah, I've had maybe I've had a solid to where to where I, I to where I got the chopper. There were oh, points yeah. in Modern Warfare that, 1 and 2 was, where was it, 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 for me that was the absolute best I ever did. Yeah, there were mod, there were points where I was an air supply guy. And you know, That's about all I could drop. I, what the fuck? <laughs> Why was I I was always deemed the sniper? Thanks. I mean, I may appreciate I it. I mean, I mean, you deem yourself your own role. That's true. But well, not no, not in those two fucking systems. I didn't. Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare Two. You guys are like, uh, Ant, you're the sniper. What? <laughs> you're um, the only one that can hit. All right, fine. I was. I was always like machine gun. Yeah, I mean, I was always true. support. I was yeah. basically like you, which is why I retired on top because there's nothing wrong with that though. But, but only you know, topping out at like 
somewhere between 12 and 14 kills in a row religiously i was like i'm never gonna get this nuke so once i got it i was like i'm not one of these guys that's constantly getting yeah. around 20 21 and then screwing up i was like i, I i'll never get this close again and yeah i, got I mean it, that's so that's fair it. though but that's fucking so, so that's but that's a feat between the three of us that you're the only one they could say has absolutely. done it i have never done nope. it mom um what we're on number, number two th- number two. two so this one might also surprise you because it's not like super big name, but the Left for Dead series. And I brought it up during mine. Yeah, you did. The thing is, is I put so many hours into the campaign mode. Again, it was literally like ultimate. It's just horde mode from start to fucking finish. But for me, for me personally, they were so much fun because it was something, again, outside of the norm for a first person shooter and that's one of my biggest things is that's what i look for i don't want something that's going to be the same time in and time again now i also remember throwing down you mean you have you would do split screen with left for dead and your wife would play with you and then I, I mean, and then you would jump mean, in. be jumping in absolutely and yeah that shit was that shit was so much fun and that's what i mean so for and this is just this is just my opinion first person shooters are not only not always the best game that's out at the time. It's the best game that you have the most fun with your homies it's with. Community. There's probably 17 people that played that close combat game that I had on my list. You're right. But the, <laughs> right. But the thing is, they probably had the time of their life. Yeah, it's whatever There's you probably like a, yeah. three people that have played fucking Left 4 Dead series, and it's two of them are sitting in this fucking room. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's the most fun you're going to have playing with your friends. And Left 4 Dead did that for me. It was fucking fun. You're literally running away from zombies, trying to fucking kill them, or slow them down and progress through the little quote unquote story mode. And then on, and then on crazy. top, and then on top of that, I mean, I mean, I mean, just for another aspect of do I just add a layer to it? I mean, it gave you something you could play with your wife, Absolutely. which is which is something that I mean, a lot Never of married happens. men can't Don't necessarily was, say. Oh my yeah, god, it's if, true. If if you can find one game that your wife loves to play with you, it's like holy shit, it's I've like, won. I am. I am playing this no matter what. But a lot of people do <laughs> pass over that game, especially when you have I don't like know why. everyone now. Like they love to talk about Call of Duty Zombies. Like do y'all forget the OG here, yeah. Left yeah. 4 Dead. 100%. Left 4 Dead is 100%. legit where it started. Yeah. If you think about it. All right. Oh, here so we go. My number one is something that you guys will absolutely not be surprised. The listeners who listen to us normally will not be surprised. Hey, can I take a guess? Good. Borderlands Three. No. <gasps> oh! Can I take a guess? That entire area went black with your clip. All right, good. Well, um, well, I mean, um, this ain't really a guess because I mean, we did this last week and you know it. Oh. Borderlands 2. Yes. Really? That was so anticlimactic. Yes. It was. I'm not going to lie. I, the only reason I got that is because of his guess first because I actually for a second thought it well, was Well, I mean, if you 3. think about it, though, Borderlands 2 literally has like the best DLCs out. So so, here, so here's my thing. I mean, number one, Borderlands 2 had some of the best characters for me. I mean, Maya Maya is hands down my favorite yeah, uh, vault know. hunter of all time. You yes, mean, like, I know. I was just saying, I want to get glyphs. You know what I mean? To go ahead and actually have something similar to what she had. Uh, number two, best DLCs. You know what I mean? You had yeah. the um, oh my god, the creator of Bad Attitude. Well, wasn't that also uh, the one with the Fuster cl- the Fuster Cluck? No, 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 that's no, this no, new no, one. no. Fuster Cluck is three. You know I mean that's the one I've been currently. You had, oh, that's right. That's where I heard you it. had Captain Scarlet. You had Captain Scarlet. You had um, the tiny, tiny Tina Tina's one that was like the dungeons? old school D and D. Tiny which, Tina's uh, dungeon, which actually came out as an actual D and D board game now. No, that's yes. cool. Are you serious? Yes, that's so fucking I, cool. IGN did like a four hour stream. Really? Of that? Yeah. Of the of the game. That's so cool though. Yeah, like bunkers and badasses, I think it was called or something was, along those lines. There was That's one more that awesome. we're forgetting. There's well, there was we multiple. For, we forgot if you it think last about, time, so. but you also have to think about all the holiday specials they had. They had uh, one yeah. that would had to do with yeah. Halloween, one that had to do with Christmas. I don't remember the uh, names yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah, the gobblers and Yeah, they had like the they they were little tiny short stories, but again, they're still DLCs. It had one of the at least to me, the best villain of all time. Handsome, or, Jack. Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack. Hey, to, fuck yeah. Handsome Jack was one of the most deplorable people. I love and then, that, man. And then on top of it, when you saw what he did with Angel and then you learn the origin of Angel, you just go, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I'm right there with you, Wes. Possibly like, one oh of, my God. Possibly up. one of the best villains he's up there. out of any of the video games I've ever played. If I'm putting a top five of villains... He's literally in the top three. Yeah. Okay. Hands and then, down. And then also, and then also for yeah. me, I mean, it had to do with, I mean, obviously, I mean, the guns. I mean, I mean, so you, you had over a million guns that you could go ahead and actually use in the game. Correct. And yeah. I mean, the um, like I remember like the flacker. I mean, I mean the flacker. Um, ex- I mean, legendary shotgun was like the absolute dude. That was the tits, dude. 
Is the DLC that we're forgetting, or is this one of the ones I already said, where you end up uh, with those big ass things with the long legs, and you go to like you know Moxie's bar is up in the, uh, it's like up on this broken ass highway, and you're constantly uh, you're constantly on these General like, railways. Knox. Yes. General Knox. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other one. Where oh. you end up in his in his that place at the end with, and you can like glitch your way you in. And, wait, you and that? I spent a lot of time on that one. We did. What's the what is the one with the uh, fuck is his name? I forget. Torg? Torg. The badass crater. Badass, badass crater, dude. badass dude. That was literally one of my favorite DLCs of all time. And like I mean, like I mean, I talked about it, Thank at least, you. I mean, at least to some extent when it came down to um bunkers and badasses, you know what I mean? The one with Tiny Tina. Yeah, there's only one nail hole in it. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but um, like it, I mean, it gave her, it gave Tina, a way to cope and and get through her emotions of losing Roland. Uh, you know also, Tiny Tina. If we're doing, I think we need to do a show on this. Like top five, top ten villains and protagonists. Like antagonists and protagonists. I think we need to do a show on this. That'd be cool. That'd be really I, cool. I think That'd it's actually. I think it's a pretty fun show, That'd be a right? Fun fun episode. Anyway, for sure, Tiny Tina in the top five. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. She's hilarious. Love her. Type that down for the next uh, oh, topics. Oh. I think that's. I think that's. I think this but, is a yeah, show so, that we should do. Yeah. So for me, yeah, Borderlands Two is. Easily the best game, the best first person shooter I've ever played. For me, number one, don't have to go super in depth because we've already all talked about it. But Goldeneye, my That's number three. T- yeah. I I know I remember endless pizza party nights at my crib, <laughs> staying up until all hours of the night, just plugging in and just destroying each other. Everyone going for the freaking golden gun, and like I said, karate chopping everybody and looking for the rocket launcher, and it just I had so much fun playing that when i was a kid and having like that was like the start of like sleepovers for me it was yeah. having all my boys over yeah I mean, ordering really a, you was. know having my parents or my, whoever order a pizza because definitely wasn't me and just playing <laughs> Goldeneye. order pizza we just had her just go over to spanky's and fucking make it and come back. that that was at one point but before <laughs> that and we were just talking about this the other day straight ilio's pizza dog oh all we were talking baby. about ilio's that. pizza Rectangles. with some hot sauce cook up let a ho- me go oh my fucking all Lord. right so like my number one i was gonna say exactly what he just said but i don't want to be a me too type of person do you know what i'm saying well that's, oh. that's me too um so i'm actually kind of torn the thing is I don't really have a number one, I guess you could say, because, again, it falls in line with his. The 007 is literally where sleepovers and hanging out with friends started. Yeah. yeah. Um, fuck it. I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to be a Me Too today. That's dude, That's normally not there, me, but I'm going to be a Me Too that. today. There's nothing wrong with gaining new information, no, processing. and No, no, no. He, I, I'm, I'm literally, it's the same exact reason for Andy. Friendships have been won and lost over that game. <laughs> let's oh just my put, God. let's put it that not way. Kidding. There's still kids I don't talk to. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> and right? And I could probably boil it down so, to that game. So you know what? You I'm guys gonna can go upstairs and talk with Jess about it because Jess is yeah. I'm Jess has get, quite a history with that. I'm game. gonna say the, exactly the same. I'm gonna be a me too today, and it's definitely 007. Someone's about to grab the golden gun. You unplug their controller port. Real oh quick. my <laughs> God, dude! Don't even fucking get me started. Yeah, that's that's gonna be my number one as, awesome. as well. Yeah, love it. Yep. All right, so that is our first person shooter episode. This was a little longer, but we expected that. Yeah, but it was and, fun. And like, I mean, this one just brought back so many great memories for all of us and talking about all these games. Yeah. So, uh, You're right. And where can they find us? Oh yeah, you got to find us somewhere, right? Well, yeah. this is how you can connect with CGC. You can check us out on our Twitter, which is at Console Crew. Um, again, we do have our own website which is uh, www.consolegamingcrew.com that is connected directly to our gmail which is consolegamingcrew at gmail.com again please throw us a line let us know how we're doing let us know how we're fucking up we can fix things we can make things better or worse you decide i don't really care we have our youtube which we continuously upload shit to which is uh console gaming crew on youtube again we have all of our podcasts that get dropped there um, we have our Hot Ones inspired video as well. Um, unboxings for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Wes just did it for me. I don't have to say it now. And now we have our Instagram, which is Console Gaming Crew, which unfortunately I'm actually in charge of. I'm slowly trying to get shit up there, so just stand fast and don't yell at me yet, all right, people? And then we have our Facebook, which is Console Gaming Crew. You can check us out there. Again, um, 
any kind of uh, feedback that we get from all of our listeners is absolutely key and vital to make this podcast 10 times better than it we think it already is. Um, also, if you want to drop us a line and you actually write us a letter, um, and you would like to do that, reach out to any one of these uh, social media outlooks and we can give you the information to actually drop us a line. Uh, whether it be typewriter or handwritten, and we will definitely write you a letter back. We will definitely read your letter on the next podcast yep. or whenever we get it. Um, again, you can check us out on every and any single podcasting stream or streaming service out there. Um, next big thing I'd like to uh, touch really quick is, Wes, we, we almost got you on this Twitch thing, right? I am five away. So He's close. five away, folks. We ended up with a new follower last, last night. Last night, which was fucking And I awesome. did make sure I followed him this morning. What's his he... name again? And Zooms. And Zooms. And Zooms. Thank you again, brother. Or, or sister. Sister. Um, so you can check out Wes at Dragon underscore CGC. You can check out Andy at Scooby CGC. And you can check out the oddball myself, which is CGC underscore Squishy Soprano. Again, these are all the locations you can reach us at. Uh, please do. We love the feedback that we can get. If you want to drop us five stars, you want to drop us one star, let us know how awesome we are. Or not. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do. Please. And when you throw those five stars or one star, hopefully they're five stars, please throw them to the Apple Podcast app or Podchaser. So this motherfucker forgot Amazon again. I mean, you just said it. So yeah, we are on Amazon <laughs> Music and we are also on um, Audible, just so everybody can go ahead and find us on there as well. Facts. So until then, as always, we love y'all and stay safe. Wash your hands. Game Wear on. your mask, please. Please stay six feet away from me. <laughs> but we still love y'all. And game on. Game on.